Driscoll. Sacked by Jarvis Jones. Intercepted oh. by Bakari Rambo. Oh, my gracious. Mitchell makes the catch. He breaks away. Touchdown. Win the next two, and Georgia returns to the SEC title game. But Ole Miss has a dream of its own. Touchdown, Ole Miss. It is good! Will the Rebels continue their turnaround season, or does destiny carry the Bulldogs one step closer? between the hedges on an autumn Saturday. The Home Depot SEC on CBS. The sixth-ranked Bulldogs look to hunker down against the Ole Miss Rebels. Two thousand plus are ready on homecoming day as the Bulldogs are back relevant again with a shot at an SEC and possible national championship. Uga's ready. Are you? Here come the Bulldogs. Looking to make a move in the SEC East with a victory today and against Auburn next week. The oldest Rebels have lost 16 in a row. But they're decked out in all gray today after winning two in a row. One at home and one on the road. Now five and three, Hugh Freeze has his team on the precipice of bowl eligibility for the first time since 2009. Moments ago, the first-year coach, born in Independence, Mississippi, had this to say to his team. Hey, there's going to come a point in time in this game today where something doesn't go our way. Do not blink. Do not blink. You play the next one. We're in it. Hey, going into the this journey ends up into the promised land, so to speak, for us. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a fight today. Stand in front of them, and you have more heart than they do. You have a lot more heart than they do. Hey, in just a few minutes, we're going to walk down this little path. I'm going to tell that security guard to let these boys loose, and then I'm going to ask him to lock that gate. Let's go pick a fight with somebody. How about some fire and brimstone? Hello, everyone. Tim Brando by my side, the former All-Pro and Notre Dame quarterback as well, Steve Berline. What did you think about that? Well, I'll tell you what. Just <laughs> another example of Hugh Freeze doing what he does best. He says all the right things. And most importantly, he's got his team believing in themselves again for the first time in a while. But I believe there's also someone else that this team believes in big time. That's their starting quarterback, sophomore quarterback Bo Wallace. He's the guy who has really shown up the last three weeks, taking control of this team. He's in control of this up-paced, high-paced, fast-tempo game, game plan that they're going to bring in against the Georgia Bulldogs. If he's on today, I guarantee you that he's going to give the Georgia Bulldogs all they can handle. Yeah, Steve, it won't be as easy, though, against this uh, junkyard dogs defense that reappeared after they were called out by safety Sean Williams last week. They're no longer soft. No, they are not soft. Just ask the, the, the Florida Gators about that. They showed up big time last week. They were relentless in their pursuit of Jeff Driscoll. Timmy, this is a Florida team that had only four turnovers coming into that game. They had six turnovers last week, and they were led by number 29, Jarvis Jones. This is a guy who's one of the very best defensive football players in the country. Last week, three sacks, two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, just doing what he does every single week, showing up ready to play and causing problems. Old Miss better be aware of where he is all day today. The third member of our broadcast team 
is Marty Snyder, and he's downstairs right now. Marty? Well, Tim, it's been the question in Athens all week long. How does Georgia avoid the letdown after the huge win last week against Florida? Mark Rick tried to answer that on Twitter this week, kind of challenging the fans here in Athens to come out early and to be loud. Why is he worried about that? Well, you mentioned it. It's homecoming day, and Coach Rick was worried about the fact that people might be more worried about the activities around the game and not the game actually itself. As far as the team, they've been living off of Jarvis Jones' quote all week long when he said, after the Florida win, the Florida win means nothing if we don't continue to win. Tim, they know it's a classic trap game. They also know two more wins, and they accomplish a season-long goal, winning the SEC East. Gorgeous day. Chamber of Commerce, to be sure. 78 degrees. Wind will not be a factor. It should be a fast track. This is a series that's been dominated by the dogs, although in 1996, the second-year coach by the name of Tuberville came in here and won a game, 31-27. That was the last time Ole Miss won in this series. Number 13. Marshall Morgan is preparing to kick it away. Georgia won the toss and deferred. Randall Mackey is back deep, number one uh, for the Rebels. Jalen Walton is also back there. Three yards deep and hitting a knee is Mackey. Ole Miss will start at the 25-yard line. Let's take a look now at the starting lineups presented by Chick-fil-A. And we touched on Bo Wallace. Interception issues early, but he's righted the ship. He can also beat you with his legs, as Steve mentioned a moment ago. And he's been outstanding in the red zone of late. 28 trips into that red zone, 26 times the Rebels have scored, and 20 of those are touchdowns. There's an offensive line that's really improved, too, and out of the shotgun, quickly, slant pass is incomplete. It was intended for Vince Sanders. As you look at McCray, Morris, Swindle, Hawkins, and Burton, this is an improved young offensive front. Moncrief is the number one option. Scott, fifth best rusher on average, 5.4 per carry for Ole Miss. He's number five in the SEC. Second and 10. That pass is caught by Mackey. They love to have him touch it 20 times today. And he's stopped by Rambo. As you look at the front three, Smith, Jenkins, and Washington, the linebackers led by Ogletree and Herrera, very active. Cummings, Williams, Rambo, and Swan, they've improved after the suspensions that cost Georgia some of its depth in the early going this season. And the tempo, Tim, is going to be the key today. Right now we're seeing Ole Miss not in a big-time rush, but when they turn it up, look out. Third down and two. Georgia shows blitz. Right up the gut they go with Scott. It looks as though he may have the necessary yardage for the first down. It may be close, however. Well, they're going to have to get physical with this Georgia Bulldog team at some point, Tim. This is more of a finesse offense. They don't have that true power running back, but they're going to have to stick it up there between the tackles today to keep the Georgia Bulldogs honest on defense. They did get the first down. Wallace with plenty of time. That pass is caught. Threaded the needle on the corner to the tight end, Allen. He's inside the 20 and down at the 16-yard line. Well, this is a pass, Timmy, that should have been intercepted. In fact, I thought it was initially. Bo Wallace standing strong in the pocket as he does. He's got a big-time arm. But look at that right there over the outstretched arms of the safety. That could have been intercepted. Instead, it ends up being a huge play for Ole Miss. Furby Allen taking it down the sideline. Sean Williams gambled and lost. Quick hitch going out to Sanders. And he's ushered out of bounds, shy of the 10 at about the 12. Brandon Smith made the stop. Hey, Tim, this is an Ole Miss team that scored on its first possession five times out of the eight games this year, number one in the SEC. Let's take a look now at the Verizon Red Zone. This is a Rebels team that's really done well in here, as we mentioned at the start of this series. Moncrief goes flanked to the top of your screen. Second down. Scott on the read option stopped at the 11. A 
And this is another another factor that's kind of key here, Tim. When Ole Miss goes scores first, they're 4 0. They're undefeated this year. So big for them to get on the scoreboard on this first drive. By the same token, Georgia is 5 0 when they score first, but only about 500 when they don't. Steve, on uh, eight first game possessions, Ole Miss has scored on five of them. Third down, Mackey now in the backfield. And he gets it. He can throw it. He's a former quarterback. He was looking to do that, but he's taken out of bounds. It was well defended by Georgia. Damian Swan coming over to knock him out of bounds. A loss of six. You're exactly right, Tim. This was definitely an attempted reverse pass to, to Randall Mackey, the former quarterback. Started six games at quarterback last year for the Rebels. Now playing more wide receiver running back, but very well played by the Georgia defense. Mark, Mark Rick told us if he can prevent the big play on the gimmicks, that was one of them right there. He thinks they're going to be all right defensively. Bryson Rose had a career long last week of 53 yards. He was three for three in Little Rock against Arkansas. This 34 yarder splits the uprights. And the Rebels conquer the dogs on the opening series, marching downfield with a 51 yard hookup to the tight end, Furbia Allen, to set up Rose. We are underway. Help the victims of disasters like Superstorm Sandy. Text Red Cross to 90999 to make a $10 donation to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund. CBS Cares. And our thoughts and prayers are with all along the Atlantic seaboard after what they've gone through all week long. Bo Wallace coming off another successful opening drive for the Ole Miss Rebels. Eight plays, 58 yards. The big pass was to... Furbia Allen, the tight end, and Rose kicked the 34-yard field goal, and they lead it three to nothing. You know, Tim, I'm I'm really impressed with that young man, Bo Wallace. He's big. He's six foot four, about 225, 230 pounds, and and just talking to him on the phone this past week, he sounds like he's got it figured out. He he really has a great perspective, and he's happy for the opportunity that he's got to play for the Ole Miss Rebels. Originally at Arkansas State, and then transferred to junior college, left. The program that Hugh Freeze had there with the 10 and 2 Red Wolves of the Sun Belt. That kick is uh, through the end zone. Mitchell takes an E. Georgia will set up shop at the 25 yard line. Here's a look now at our starting lineups presented by Chick fil A. He is the top quarterback among active players in yardage and efficiency, Aaron Murray. And uh, last week, a bit of a struggle, but when he needed to make the, the play, he did. And well, it's a signature victory in his career. No doubt. But it was also one of the worst performances of his career. Fortunate to come out on top against a very good George, uh, Florida team, obviously. But uh, he knows he's got to play better for this team to win. The six turnovers against Florida helped tremendously. It goes without saying. Doesn't hurt when you've got uh, the freshman sensation Todd Gurley dotting the eye. And he'll take the quick pitch. Headed to the wide side of the field and look out. He turned the corner and has it out to the 42-yard line, 17 yards. Uh, Tim, I got the strong impression, I think you did too, after talking to Mark Rick, that we were going to see a lot of Todd Gurley and Keith Marshall today running the football. He wants to see if this Ole Miss defense can hold up to a big-time pounding all day long. This is an undersized uh, Ole Miss defensive front. Georgia should be able to run the ball between the tackles very well. And Rick did not waste time telling us that when we visited with him yesterday. Early the learned setback. Play option fake. Pressure off the edge. Speed and quickness of number 10, C.J. Johnson. From Philadelphia, Mississippi, a defensive end at 6'3", 235. You look at that Georgia offensive line, mixed, matched, but highly intelligent. All of these guys can play any position on the forward wall. Brown, Ogletree, Gurley, Lynch, and King. Keep an eye on Tavares King as the go-to receiver today for the Bulldogs. Second and 15. Right off that three gap, he gets ahead for four yards. And the Ole Miss defense looks this way. Johnson, who had the sack, Rose Grant and Wiggum. Mary Kimdichie, keep an eye on him. He's the leading tackler. Hilton, the other linebacker. Golson, Elston, Pruitt, and Sawyer seeing a lot today of Hilton at strong safety. 
as uh, the Hendrick Collins has moved over to the corner. Sinquez Golson unable to go a late scratch in today's game. Third down at 11. Out of the shotgun, Murray. Tackled again, this time off the blitz. Coming from the safety spot, Cody Pruitt, number 25, the sophomore from Bay Springs, Mississippi. Well, you're going to see Cody Privet, Pruitt time this thing absolutely perfectly. Number 25 is going to shoot that gap right through there. Coming through in a good, clean shot. He saw C.J. Johnson coming off the edge again for the second time. The Rebels love this start. And I'll tell you, the guy that they're going to have to really think about all day long is C.J. Johnson. He's their best, most talented player. And I think he's going to be going against that rookie right tackle, John Theus, all day, that freshman right tackle, all day long. He's going to have his hands full. Colin Barber will put it away for the Bulldogs. Orbic Neat is back deep. He takes it at the 23. Has a gap. Look out. He stays on his feet. A whirling dervish at the 42, and he thinks better of it and goes out of bounds. Outstanding field position for the Rebels when we return. 44-yard boot, a 19-yard return. Horvick neatly going about the business of bringing the ball back. The Rebels lead early. Out to a quality start between the hedges. What a way to spend an autumn afternoon on CBS. Time for a taste of the SEC, presented by Sonic. On October the 12th, 1929, Sanford Stadium was opened along with the distinctive Privet Hedges. Former Georgia President Stedman v. Sanford had visited the Rose Bowl years prior and decided that Rose Hedges would beautify and add a unique aesthetic to this football stadium. But Rose Hedges would not survive in this climate. Privet was planted instead and has become synonymous with Georgia football for the past 83 years. Nothing quite like the hedges and the tradition and pomp and pageantry so very special here. Tim Brando, Steve Berline. Let's take a look with eye vision at this improving dog defense. Well, this defense really showed up against Florida. Why was it? I want you to see some zone blitz things they did. Watch on the right-hand side. That's Jarvis Jones. Look at how they, they blitz off the edge on the outside and on hit coming up the middle. Look how quick he gets to Jeff Driscoll in the backfield. Driscoll never had any idea. It was a perfectly executed stunt. And then right here, coming with Bakari Rambo on the safety blitz, times it up perfectly. Again, Florida had no answer for it. They did not know what to expect or how to adjust. Those were key as to how they got so much pressure on Jeff Driscoll in that Florida offense. In talking with defensive coordinator Todd Grantham, he said it took a little while after those suspensions to open the year for some of his best players. Rambo, obviously, Jones, there's so many to, to get their feet underneath them. I mean, this defense has finally had enough reps well, to play at the level that they needed to. And this is the right time to kick it up, too. They, they, they got a chance to do something special. Play action fake, Wallace. And that pass is incomplete, intended for Dante Moncrief. One thing about this Ole Miss offense, though, unlike Florida, Bo Wallace gets the ball out very quick. He really does. And, and, and what, what impresses me most about him as far as the physical part of it, not only can he beat you with his arm and his feet, but he stands in that pocket when free rushers come, and he knows how to get that ball out of there accurately with pressure and still doesn't get phased by it whatsoever. He'll take the hit and make the throw. A rare two-back set with Randall Mackey and Jeff Scott back there. Out of the shotgun formation, Mackey in motion. And on the zone read, Wallace carries. In this offense, you're going to get nicked up. Now, we will see some of Barry Brunetti for that very reason. You've got to have a second-string quarterback that's ready to go in Hugh Freeze's offense. And that takes some of the pressure off of Bo Wallace because the quarterback is required to run the football here. And Bo Wallace is very good at it, but they do not want him taking that many hits during the course of a ball game. Third down and eight. Man-to-man -man defense, that's why Hugh Freeze is changing the play. You can see safeties lined up all the way across. No deep safety. See, the play clock is down to four. Wallace trying to keep the play alive. A sack back at the 40-yard line. Off the backside, Alec Ogletree with the first sack of the day for the Bulldogs. Well, this was a true cover zero blitz. Zero meaning no safety in the back. They were coming with guys off the edges, drop back into a zone blitz 
and it really confused Bo Wallace. Good thing he didn't throw that football, hung on to it, wasn't stripped because it could have been disastrous if he would have thrown it without being certain what was there. Malcolm Mitchell is back deep. Jim Broadway to punt it up out of there for the Rebels. Mitchell with a fair catch called for at the 17 yard line. 43 yard boot for Broadway. The Rebels still lead by three. Georgia has it when we return right after this. Three nothing our score. The Ole Miss Rebels with it, and a couple of sacks early. The Rebel defense made a statement in the opening series for Georgia. They really did. They stepped up and, and, and set the tone defensively with their star player, true hybrid defensive end C.J. Johnson, with the first sack off the left side, and then again coming with him off the edge, and then Cody Pruitt on the inside, both coming free, getting the hits on Aaron Murray. And I'll tell you what. If he's taking clean shots like that all day, it's going to be a really long day for Aaron Murray. Undersized and a, a patchwork secondary without question, but they are aggressive, and that's exactly what defensive coordinator Dave Womack wants. Gurley dots the eye for Aaron Murray. Play fake. A little bootleg option here for Murray. Looking for a nice block from Tavares King, and he takes it out to the 24-yard line, a gain of seven. To get the latest news, analysis, and predictions from Tony Barnard, Bruce Feldman, and other CBS Sports experts, watch College Football 360 Live weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern or on demand at cbssports.com slash collegefootball360. Gurley remains in at tailback. Following Alexander Lincoln free. He's out beyond the 30 to the 32 yard line following the big fullback, a pickup of eight. Well, this is a Georgia offensive line. All five guys have started all games this year. This is a physical. Look at that scene backside that Gurley is really, really good for a young running back, freshman, true freshman running back. He's great at feeling those cutback lanes and trusting his track running up in there. His roommate's not bad either. We'll probably see some of Marshall. This time he stopped in his tracks maybe a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Nice work by Mike Hilton coming up. The safety, Cameron Wiggum, was the first to get there, number 55 for Ole Miss. Well, Tim, this is a, a Ole Miss defense that is really amped up right now. I think Georgia, would have, what they should be doing is what they're doing right now. Just pound it up in there, slow them down, wear them down, getting physical, see if they can get them to slow up a little bit off the edges. Second and 11, Marlon Brown split wide to the bottom of your screen. I think we may have had a mix-up. And um, Ole Miss, I believe Murray thought he had them off sides, and then he quick snapped. It may be five yards against the Rebels. I I think it was Jay Rome, the left, the tight end, that we actually jumped. Five-yard penalty. It remains second down. Just Jay Rome. It was Jay Rome, no doubt. Well, who will be uh, tonight's matchup winner? Our Facebook question. Number one, Alabama. Number five, LSU on CBS. A for Alabama, B for LSU. To vote, uh, log on to Facebook.com slash SEC on CBS. Who do you like in that game? Well, I'll tell you what. I, I want to hear your pick first. Who do you like? <laughs> Wait a minute. I've played that game <laughs> I'm gonna, before. I'm going I'm to weigh your choice against mine. I'll tell you, I just, uh, I don't know that anyone should be that prohibitive a favorite Saturday night in Tiger Stadium. I'll, yeah. I'll say that. I'm with you. I think it's going to be a battle. But I, I, I think the quarterback position is going to be the key, and I'm just not sure LSU can match up, get enough plays in the passing game to, certainly, to, to win that ball yeah, game. Certainly that's the case that can be made for Alabama, and the reason why they were nearly a double-digit favorite at the start of the week. Yeah, and you've got to make yards somehow against Alabama. Second and 16. Murray with the play fake, stopped at the 20. He thought he had the offsides turned into a procedure penalty, so now you're really backed up, and it's third and long. Bennett coming up with the play there with the push. Well, if I'm Mark Rick, I'm here's Bennett right inside there off the top of your screen, and he, he just muscles through there. If I'm Mark Rick, I'm very concerned right now because his offensive line has not been given Aaron Murray even a chance to look down the field and find his receivers. 
Third down and 22. And this is coming off what Georgia felt was their best uh, game for their offensive line against the Gators. That pass incomplete. And again, really well defended by Ole Miss. And again, really good pressure off the left side by C.J. Johnson. That's he it. hit he hit uh, Aaron Murray right in the chin as he was letting go of that football. And to Hendrick Collins, who's moved to the corner position from his normal safety spot, was there to provide coverage on Malcolm Mitchell. So it's fourth down, and the Bulldogs will be forced to punt again. Colin Barber comes out there, and Neat, coming off a 17-yard return a moment ago is inside his 40 yard line. Now this couldn't be going any better than it is right now for Hugh Freeze's Rebels. A long kick sending Neat back inside his 20. Beautiful punt by Barber and really well defended by Georgia. Outstanding work by their special teams. 60 yard boot, a five yard return, and Costa Valvas, who's their gunner, their best special teamer, number 38, down there to make the stop. Gary Danielson, Tracy Wilson, and let's take a look at the tail of the tape and talking about the offensive advantages for Alabama in large measure because of A.J. McCarron. No doubt. How do you go through the schedule they've been through in the SEC with no interceptions? I don't know how you do it. A.J. McCarron playing fantastic football, but, you know, the, the, the tail of the tape, what does it really mean? Who knows? These are two heavyweight contenders. The bottom line is that I think if LSU cannot make plays in chunks yeah. in the passing game, find a way to move the football quickly, it's not going to matter. Out of the zone read, it's Jeff Scott. Ahead for three, maybe four yards. Everyone was concerned about the Georgia Bulldog passion meter for this game. To this point, I think they've been up to the task on the defensive side of the line of scrimmage. But uh, overall, what do you think? Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm just concerned about the way their their offensive line is protecting Aaron Murray. I know they want to get physical and run the football, but they've got to be able to throw the football as well. Second and six. Scott again. This is an Ole Miss team without a power back. They look for gaps and angles. Amalo, Amalo Herrera, 52, making the stop. They create those gaps by way of spreading the field, the width of the field, with this high-octane offensive there. Right. They've got to create space. And as you said, Tim, this, this Georgia defense looks to me ready to play. The, the one big play Ole Miss made was on a play that should have been intercepted by safety Sean Williams. Ole Miss capitalized and got a field goal because of it. But that's it. Rebels go empty with five receivers. And Ole Miss... Sees an opportunity here with Georgia's defense still trying to get lined up. Watch Jarvis Jones off the edge here, number 29. Yeah, I think we may have a timeout. Yeah, time the Bulldogs out. were having Georgia. some struggles in getting First lined up and time. wisely took a timeout. Yeah, they give you so much to think about. They really do. No doubt about it. Third down and five when we come back. There are the standings and know this all Georgia has to do is win here and then beat Auburn the longest standing rivalry in the South and they will be SEC Eastern Division champions and head back to Atlanta for the second straight year third down and five for Ole Miss. Neat the motion back takes it and he has a first down and then some. A great call by Hugh Freeze here but. They run a little bubble screen and the key block you're going to see number 85 James Logan out in front on this play. He, he's the one that made the block and sprung that bubble screen downfield gave, gave uh, Ole Miss a good third down conversion. That's Barry Brunetti the backup quarterback that's uh, alongside you freeze helping to send in those signals to his quarterback. On first down Ole Miss has been passing it. Not this time, however. Right up the middle, it goes to Scott for a couple of yards, and that's it. There's Gathers, Kwame Gathers, the nephew of Jumpy Gathers. In that middle, you'll see sometimes John Jenkins move to 
the end position because he's so athletic, number six, and they'll move Kwame Gathers in to the nose tackle spot. This is a, a very versatile Georgia defensive and front. And Gathers a traditional nose tackle and only about 355 pounds at 6'6". For now, Benilius Washington remains at the fix of and here's more pressure coming from him. Wallace with time, ad lives and finds Neat along the sideline. Corbett Neat still on his feet and down at the 36-yard line. Now, this is one of the things that Wallace brings to you. He, he, he is so athletic for a big guy, and he throws on the run very, very well. He's got a strong enough arm to where he does not have to be set to make the tough throws, and he makes plays on the outside. When he scrambles, when it's a pass play called, he's not looking to beat you with his feet. He's looking to beat you with his arm with a play down the field. Right there is a good example. Well, you see the total yards in this game, mostly with Ole Miss. Nothing on the ground because of the sacks, remember, that they take into account in college football. And on the zone read, it's Wallace again. Stop for little or no gain. That true read option right there where Bo Wallace is just reading the defensive end on the right side. That's Jar Jarvis. Er, er, that's uh, Jones. Jarvis I'm Jones. sorry. Jarvis <laughs> Jones. A lot of J's there. Yeah. Uh, but he made the right read, took it up inside. Just a good pursuit by the rest of the Georgia Bulldog defense. Yeah, they really do. Is a Brunetti. I think may be coming into the game. He is in the game. Barry Brunetti coming in for Wallace. And this is not uncommon. They'll do this often, particularly when inside the red zone. He has started a few games in his career as we come up on the two-minute mark of the first quarter. Scott the lone setback. Brunetti, he decides to be flushed from the pocket and look to ad lib and wisely steps out of bounds at the 38-yard line. He was about to be popped by Christian Robinson. That was another one of those gimmick plays that, that Mark Rick was very leery of coming to this game. Hugh Freeze right there brought in his running quarterback, tried to fake the quarterback run, straight ahead run, and Brunetti pulled back up, tried to get the big play down the field, but very disciplined coverage by the Georgia secondary. There was nothing up the field, so Brunetti wisely tried to run and pick up a couple. So many different formations, Steve, for this Georgia defense to deal with. Third and 11. Wallace, a well-designed pass pattern. And uh, Corbett Neat has been a favorite target in this game. He's got another catch. His third of the afternoon. Well, Coach Hugh Freeze has got a decision to make here. He's looking at a 48-yard field goal here with the ball on the 30-yard line. Yep. Remember, he made a career long of 53 last week. Yeah, but, but he, he loves going for it on fourth does. down. I like the situation. I like him doing it here. He's done it nine times this year, converted six. He'll, he'll do it inside his own 30. May have cost him in that uh, Texas A&M game to some extent. But you know what? But the he team, doesn't care. The team knows uh, that he's got confidence when absolutely. he does that kind of stuff. Scott and Mackey are in the backfield. And took too much time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take the timeout to the Rebels and talk about it. 56 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. You no know, one talking to Hugh Freeze. We'll share it when we get back. Big fourth down play coming up. Stay right where you are. Tomorrow on 60 Minutes, he's an MVP quarterback who still keeps his scholarship rejection letters. What makes Aaron Rodgers tick? Find out only on 60 Minutes tomorrow, only CBS. Now this is a big play in the ball game right here, Tim. I think it's a, a good call, good aggressive call, confident call by Hugh Freeze. And I think what he's going to expect, he's going to expect maybe some pressure from Georgia, come up and challenge his wide receivers. I think he might take a shot here. He might give his quarterback a chance to make a play, block it up, and see if he can do something here. Scott and Mackey have been real go-to guys in these situations for the Rebels. Scott number three, Mackey number one. They really want to get them as many touches as possible. That's Dante Moncrief right there at the top of your screen to his go-to wide receiver. Allen the tight end in motion. There is Mackey. Right on cue, and he's got the first down. Oh, well, wait a minute. I think he may have been given a bad spot. It looks like he may be short. Yeah, I he got the left foot spot, and I think that's short. I was wrong with what I call Georgia play to discipline. They, yep. I think they were looking to Mackey all the way yeah. for the for the screen. You're going to see him 
Popping back right there, and you see the extra defender over there. That's something maybe Bo Wallace, maybe had he seen that a little bit more clearly earlier, he might have gotten out of that play because they had one unblocked defender yep. out there. In the open field, you kind of like Mackey's, uh, you know, the, the odds of him making one guy miss, and he did. But fortunately for Georgia, they had more guys coming to help. You know what? That was an excellent spot, though. I thought it was a left foot spot. It was, but it was accurate. The replay proved it. Keith Marshall in the game for the first time. The other freshman and roommate of Gurley. He's ahead for a yard. And it'll be second down. You know, with the success that Todd Gurley has had in recent weeks, going over 100 yards, the only running back to do so against Florida this year, I think maybe this week we're going to get a chance to see a little bit more of Marshall take some of the pressure off of Gurley. Well, let's see if that changes some of the momentum in this game. It had really been with Ole Miss, but they're only up three. Wide open is the tight end Lynch. Arthur Lynch, I think we got our answer. Uncle Mo just went to the dogs. Well, that's a that's a play action pass called at the right time. Right on the right on the left hand side of your screen, you see 88 Lynch, no one covering him. And Mark Rick told us we've asked him why the tight ends have been kind of non-existent for the Georgia offense this year. He said, ah, you know, you might see a little bit of them this week. <laughs> right there, a good example. They popped him wide open. This could be, well, it will not be because uh, I think we may have reached the end of the first quarter. Hang on just a second. The uh, White Hats are going to talk about it. Georgia with only 17 yards total before that play to Lynch for 31 yards. That is the end of the first quarter with a score of three to nothing. Ole Miss will return to Sanford Stadium after this message and a word from your local CBS station. You're watching the Home Depot SEC on CBS. Leads it three to nothing as we start into the second quarter. I guess after that that win in Jacksonville, a lot of people thought Georgia would walk right through this Ole Miss team. What do you make of it so far? Well, it's kind of going as I expected. I don't think it's a due to a lack of passion from the Georgia football team. No. I think it's due to the fact that Ole Miss is gaining confidence each and every week. They're a good football team. They're coming out and throwing everything they've got at Georgia right now. If Georgia can weather the storm, I expect them to get stronger as the game goes along. We'll see. But I think it's going to be a dogfight for a while. It may even go all the way to the end. The quickness of that uh, Ole Miss defense has been in evidence, no doubt about it. On first down, the Bulldogs have it. Aaron Murray under center, and he's got Marshall in the backfield. Play fake, and a pump fake. And that pass is caught by Alexander Ogletree, the fullback, on the check down inside the 35 at the 34-yard line, a gain of seven. Well, when Aaron Murray is playing his best, Tim, it's when he's doing what he just did right there. He dropped back. He didn't see what he liked. He knew exactly where his check down was. He took the short pass, picked up seven yards. First time the Bulldogs have been in Ole Miss territory, and it's Keith Marshall again. He burrows down to the 30. Ahead for four yards. You see uh, Elston coming up, one of the many freshmen on this Ole Miss team, a true freshman. 13 of them have been playing this year for the Rebels, and it looks like Elston's slow to get up or he lost a shoe. He's both. He lost a shoe and he's slow to get up. <laughs> so some uh, substitutions in mass here for the Rebels. Now their, their defensive depth chart in the secondary for Dave Womack looks like an F-taper. Lots of moving around corners and safeties. Marshall stopped at the line of scrimmage this time. That entire defensive front coming up. Kim Dietschy, one of them, very active, along with Grant. Uriah Grant, the senior, out of uh, Miramar, Florida. And yeah, that was good, aggressive defense right there. It looked like they knew what was coming. And they're going to have to stand up and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with George, I think, all day long if they want to have a chance at the end of this ball game. Second and ten. Just underway second quarter between the Hedges and Athens. Out of the shotgun, Murray steps in. And that one floated on him a bit. That happened a couple of times last week. Intended for Chris Connolly, the sophomore from Dallas, Texas. It's third and ten. You know, the problem last week, Tim, I, I think was the fact that 
There was some uncertainty, some indecisiveness out of Aaron Murray. He couldn't quite pull the trigger, let it go. That time, he set up quick. He knew where he wanted to go. He had the receiver open. The ball just took off on him. Marshall, the lone setback. Murray, again, feeding it to him, and it's incomplete. As you mentioned, he had some trouble, and admittedly, there were some nerves involved. Well, well th these were three really bad first-half interceptions last year. You can see all three of them should not have been thrown. They were based on indecision, not pressure from Florida per se. Which the bottom line were just bad decisions. Right there was one of the ones that sailed on him, and they were just flat-out bad plays. And fortunately, his defense stepped up last week. They found a way to win. Fourth and ten. And on this 47-yard try, Marshall Morgan lets it go. Badly hooked. And the Rebel defense stiffens again. That guy's pretty pumped up. I'd say that uh, Newt Rockney pregame speech has uh, carried over into the second quarter. Wouldn't you? Brady Hoke's got it going on again. His team has caught fire. Ahead of Nebraska, Bo Pelini's team, and of course, uh, Coach Fitzgerald and Evanston has done a really nice job this year as well. Here, first down for the Rebels, 104 yards in the air, minus one on the ground. But there have been some sacks in this game leading to that number. Two back set, and Scott's going to take the screen pass. Boy, he's fast. He can get to the edge as quickly as anyone I've seen this year in the SEC. He's ahead to the 38-yard line. That's an eight-yard game. You know, they've only got Jeff Scott listed at 5'7", 170 pounds, but he plays fearless. And yeah. They find ways to get the football to him, and when he decides to go, he can turn it on pretty quick. Mackey and Scott remain in the game. It's very rare that you see two backs in a Hugh Freeze offense. That quick hitch is again complete. That's Jamez Logan with it, number 85. It's rare that you see him catch it there. He's more of a seam receiver, but he's out ahead for another first down. Yeah, Jamez Logan had a couple of big drops last week uh, down the middle of the field. Chances for big plays. Fortunately, uh, his team was able to stand up with the big win over Arkansas. Right there, he showed some open field ability as well. Wallace has hit his last six passes. Over the middle, that's the seam route we were talking about. Right to Logan at the 45. Between the hashes, that's where you're going to see number 85. That's exactly right. Did a great job coming across the middle. That is what he's kind of known as. He's six foot three, 195 pounds, and the ball thrown on time, on the money. It was a perfect play call for that zone defense, and Jamez Logan found that hole. Ben, Bo Wallace had no doubt where he's going with that thing. Sanders at the bottom of your screen. Again, that quick out. This time it's Mackey. Randall Mackey forges ahead to the 30-yard line of the Bulldogs. And that's a late flag. Uh-oh, look out. Where you'd expect a personal foul. Sean Williams was over there for Georgia. And the officials are going to talk about it. They may be getting a clarification as to which direction they want to go. Ken Williamson is our referee, the White Hat. After the play was over, personal foul, defense 36. It was Sean Williams. Well, let's see what Mr. Williams did here to draw that 15 yard penalty. Mack, you just run it straight down the sideline. Yep. You know, I, I'm sorry, I just don't see anything right there. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I it, it really looked as though Mackey delivered the blow. Uh, yeah, Mackey yeah. was not running away from Mackey. No. running down the sideline, lowered his shoulder. He was, out, he was out of bounds. However, it but, wasn't as if no. he initiated the contact. Mackey took it to him. I think that is uh, uh, a, a pretty bad call, to be just brutally honest. Wallace and pump fake, and he's going to be wrapped up by Herrera, 52 for Georgia at the 14. Look. The rule is you can't hit him out of bounds. I get that. But he doesn't know where he is, Williams. Well, and, and the blow was delivered by Randall Mackey. Randall Mackey was running straight down that sideline, was committed. He lowered his shoulder. Right. He may have stepped out of bounds, but Williams was in a position to hit him already. Had, I mean, you can't, you can't avoid that kind of a hit. It, was it wasn't a defenseless receiver. It yeah. wasn't anything like that. 
Moncrief comes in as the fifth wide receiver. Over the middle to the tight end, touchdown, Jamal Mosley. The senior from Memphis, Tennessee. What a well-designed play by Hugh Freeze. Uh, you know, this, this is where, as Bo Wallace says, Hugh Freeze shows his genius right here, creating a formation that puts all kinds of pressure on this Georgia defense. And you see Bo Wallace using his eyes, looking left, and then right down the middle of the field, Jamal Mosley. That's about as easy as it gets. In the SEC, you don't see receivers running that open that often. Bryson Rose with the extra point. Wallace, five for five on the drive to four different receivers. As Hugh Freeze said to his team, don't blink. Well, Georgia did, and it cost them. The Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. The Rebels and the Dogs getting with it. A textbook Ole Miss drive, six plays, 70 yards, and it didn't take long. A minute 45 off the clock. And as you look at all 22 here, just a well-designed play, right, Steve? They, they set it up perfectly. Right here, you're going to see the safeties in a two-deep look. Both of them going wide to create width. And then watch right here, the linebacker, the only guy on the inside, he steps up right down the middle is where the touchdown's going to go. There's nobody there, and there's no reason, really, for that linebacker to have stepped up the way that he did. But look at that. No impediment between... Bo Wallace and the wide receiver, the tight end running right down the middle of the field, ends up being an easy touchdown for Jamal Mosley. And it was just really, in my opinion, looked like a complete bust by the inside linebacker. Again, all set up by a number of outstanding plays to create that kind of seam, that kind of gap. The formations and the different options out of those different formations, the moving the personnel around, it creates a lot of pressure on the defense before the ball's even snapped. Uh, the young junior college transfer, now a sophomore from an eligibility standpoint, has completed his last nine in a row. Malcolm Mitchell is back deep. And this kick is going to go all the way through the end zone and past the hedges. Let's go down to Marty Schneider. Marty? Well, Tim, when I talked to Hugh Freeze earlier this week, he told me the number one thing he wanted to establish at Old Miss was accountability. When he showed up on campus, 25 of his athletes were in danger of academic probation. So how did he do that? Well, he showed up to your class on his golf cart. Defensive end C.J. Johnson told me it was a little weird seeing Coach show up in my classroom. But you know what? We needed that. They have certainly improved. The overall GPA is up. And they now have just three kids in danger of academic probation here at Ole Miss. And they're doing it all, Tim, while winning. That is what college athletics is all about. Indeed. Todd Gurley behind Ogletree in the eye formation for Georgia. Now down by 10 here at home in Athens. See if Murray can come up with an answer here. Why not give it to number three? Gurley ahead for about a seven-yard pickup there. It'll be second and short for the Bulldogs coming up. Tackle made by Cody Pruitt, the free safety from Belt Bay Springs, Mississippi. He's already had a sack this afternoon. Well, the uh, Rebels answered the momentum challenge after going for it on fourth down. Georgia moved but was stymied. And Gurley is stopped shy of a first down by about a yard. Well, the key, I think, Tim, right here is that Georgia is in no position to panic right yeah. now. We've got 11 minutes left in the second quarter. They're down 10 nothing. These fans are very uneasy right now, but Mark Rick and Aaron Murray specifically has got to keep their team calm. They've got to stay with the running game, pound it up in there, throw some play action, make a few plays, and they're right back in it. One of the most successful coaches in the SEC, Mark Rick, with his team over three on third down conversions. This is third and short. Play fake, and it is wide open. Marlon Brown. Touchdown coming up. That was a home run trot, wasn't it? That was a spectacular play call. Great hard play action. Extremely good fake carried out by Aaron Murray. You're going to see right there, right down the middle of the field, a good job by Marlon Brown. Just showing nothing special. Just came down like he was going to block the safety, and everybody came flying up for Ole Miss. As easy as it gets, the ball fake, the play action fake is what really was the key, though. 66 yards, the connection. Morgan's extra point, a little better than the field goal try. 
fool me once, but fool me twice. Aaron Murray, that was a, just a beautiful play fake. Boy, did he sell it. Charles Sawyer bit, and it was bye-bye, baby. Bye-bye. Aaron Murray trying to have another date in the SEC title game. Bulldogs with an answer. 75 yards, 66 of it on the touchdown play. And let's take a look at just how quickly the Bulldogs got back into You're it. You're going to see picture perfect. I want you to watch the safety right here. Pruitt and Corey Sawyer, they're both going to just come straight up on the play. Right here is Marlon Brown. He's going to run right down the middle of the field. But watch the play action fake and the sell by Aaron Murray in the backfield right there. Everybody comes flying up. There is nobody back here. I think you could even <laughs> make the throw or the catch. You think? Tim and Waltz in like that. Marlon Brown, he needs to be careful, though. Yeah. He pulled up a little bit early. Almost got caught by Pruitt. It's a thoughtful young man, Aaron Murray. So many ways he's what's right about the college game already in grad school. Got his degree in psychology. In fact, if anything, if, if you find a fault with him, he may be too thoughtful. He sometimes maybe overanalyzes and uh, demands perfection of himself. And he, he admits that. Yeah. And he admitted that to us point blank when we talked to him on Friday that, you know, he's got to fight against maybe thinking too much about things. He's got to trust himself a little bit more. Morgan boots it away. And straight up the gap. Carlos Davis, number 34, out to the 25-yard line. Ball spotted just outside the 25-yard line. The Rebels with a three-point lead. Ten and change remaining in the opening half. Tim Brando, Steve Berline, Marty Snyder, happy to have you with us. The first of two today on CBS. LSU and Alabama under the lights in Death Valley coming up. Mackey and Scott in the backfield again. And they swing it out, and it's Randall Mackey. Past the 30 to the 36-yard line. Bakari Rambo with a stop and 11-yard gain. Now, what can you say about this kid, Randall Mackey? I mean, quarterback started six games last year, as we stated. But I'll tell you what, when he gets that football in his hands, he knows what to do with it right there. Just turn it straight up the field, big play. I think it's one of the best moves any coach has ever made with a skilled position player in this league. Took yeah. him from quarterback. Made him a running back, but lines him up virtually anywhere. He can put him anywhere in the field. He's, he's sees the field as a quarterback, does a great job with the football. Wallace running out of time and sacked. Garrison Smith gets through the 6'3", 295-pounder out of Atlanta. The one thing we haven't seen out of Bo Wallace, and look at the film, he hasn't been holding the ball much right there. Held it a little bit longer than he should have. Garrison Smith made him pay the price right there. I'll tell you, I thought it was a better protection effort than it actually was right there. His left tackle, Emmanuel McCray, didn't play very well. Wallace again on the check down to Mackey. Ogletree is going to hustle him out of bounds. Little John as well as pushing as they go to the Ole Miss sideline. Well, George is trying to make a statement. Ogletree right there and the rest of his mates on defense sniffed out that screen right from the get-go. There was nowhere to go with that football. Bo Wallace is lucky to complete it. No gain. You see the numbers on Wallace, 13 of 15. Mackey has been a favorite target, but mostly underneath stuff. Dangerous play right here, Tim. Yeah. Third and 15. Momentum on George's side. You do not want to turn the ball over here. They go empty out of the shotgun. Wallace, so resourceful with the football. Now throws, got his man, and he dropped it. Just inside Georgia territory, Neat had it, but could not hold on after contact. You know, I thought Bo Wallace was going to do it again, what he does so well, buying time and then finding the man. He's got the cannon arm. Was not a great throw that time, but it should have been completed. If he would have pulled Neat a little bit more away from the defender, that ball would have been an easy completion, but he threw it where he did and allowed the Georgia defender to get there and knock that ball out. Brandon Smith was there providing the coverage, the senior, but yeah, that, that ball should have been caught. 
Broadway to boot it away. Malcolm Mitchell will let it roll. And then pick it up. Well covered by Ole Miss. Cody Pruitt, 25, the first to get down there. 52 yards on the punt, minus three on the return. So the uh, Bulldogs will have the ball inside their 15-yard line. We do have a flag on the field. A relatively foul-free game for the yes. most part. And you're talking about two two extreme opposites as far as penalties go. Yep. George has had 66 caught on this year. Ole Miss. Foul, foul, face mask, number 88 in the kicking team. Well, we're having some return. difficulty with the microphone of uh, Williamson, our referee, but, boy, that is a horrible call to go against you after such a beautiful defensive play. We'll be right back. Okay, Adam, thanks. Ole Miss here leading 10 to 7. Let's go down to Marty Snyder. Marty? Well, Tim, by his own admission, Aaron Murray last week against Florida was not at his best. So what did offensive coordinator Mike Bobo do, former Georgia coach? Well, Monday and Tuesday, he kind of tore him down. He played all the film and said, here's all the mistakes you made against Florida. But then Thursday, he did something he's never done in his career for Aaron. He played all the good highlights. After all the meetings were over with, he pulled him aside and said, listen, here's the quarterback you're capable of being. His overall theme this week, what they talked about it just a moment ago decision making have fun and play smart go out there and play the game that you know you can play and Steve I would argue as a former NFL quarterback every time you need a little pumping up once in a while don't you knowing that you can still do a good job at this well you know you, what you got in Aaron Murray Marty you got a guy that can take the criticism can take the heat he's gonna he's gonna be his own worst critic he knew he had to play better Bobo wanted to feel good coming into this game man. Marshall the setback on this series he forges ahead for about seven yards you look at the first four possessions for Georgia, and uh, they weren't very productive until the fourth. Yeah, you know, the, the, the fourth, the, the, the fifth actually, yeah. oh, the fourth, I'm sorry, that came at the right time because they had not shown much life prior to that. we got a player down on the field right now. And Mike Bobo came in for our meetings. We've got an injured Rebel down on the field. We'll check that out. But uh, yeah, I greeted him, and I said, this is how old. We are, Mike, the last time I called a game in here, you were the starting quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Great young guy, always a Georgia Bulldog, and um, has done a tremendous job through the years for Mark Richt. A lot of times, and you know this, uh, offensive coordinators are guys that are always going to get attention when things are going wrong. He's done a lot right in his tenure here. We'll check on the injured player and give you the details when we come back. That's Mike Mary, the uh, linebacker that was injured, did come off the field on his own power and appears to be ready to get back in as soon as possible. So good news for Rebel fans that were concerned about their linebacker. This is a very thin defensive team with very few upperclassmen. He's a junior, and they need him. You see the Georgia story offensively, pass and rush. They are down three on second down and five for Aaron Murray. Marshall remains the running back and again get, gets past the initial contact and is ahead to about the 36 yard line. That's Cody Pruitt making the stop. Tim, Hugh Freeze told us that for his team to win the ball game, they had to play a near perfect ball game. He actually said that he thinks Georgia has got more NFL caliber players than anybody else in the SEC. That's a big statement. Yep. They're playing pretty darn well at this point. Talk to NFL scouts. They'll tell you there are nine future NFL players on this Georgia team. Not necessarily just in this year's so class. That they know of. That they know of that will be projecting as a potential NFL talent. Here's Marshall again ahead on a two-yard gain and okay. should be ahead for the first down as Joel Kite made the stop. Well, Aaron, Aaron Murray's came, come through when he's had to, the opportunities right there was a big throw to Lynch early in the game off a of play action and again off a of play action. The third and short play he popped Marlon Brown for the big touchdown, 75-yard touchdown. The right play calls at the right time and then executed very well by Aaron Murray and his players on the other end, his teammates on the other end. Quite efficient when the running game is with you and then you can go play action. You're not exactly having to fit it into tight spots, are you? Misdirection. That ball's in the air and fumble. Rebels come away with it. It looks to be Cody Pruitt, number 25, that got it after the initial hit. 
Oh, that, popped into the air. That was Keith Marsh, and that was a picture perfect hit. Kite and company. By, yeah, we can't tell who that was that stuck his nose in there along with Kite, but there were a couple guys that put their nose right on that football. That's a big turnover at the right time for Ole Miss, the wrong time for Georgia. Oh, wow. That was Kim Dietschy, the leading tackler, the Tasmanian devil of this uh, Ole Miss defense. Yeah, I'll tell you, that was picture perfect. They always tell you to put your hat on the ball yep. if you're a defensive player. That's exactly what happened. He and Kite collaborated, and then it was Cody Pruitt with a recovery. And a great opportunity now for the Rebels at the 32-yard line of Georgia after the turnover. Quick slant is caught at the 20, and this one's on the deck. Fumbled and pulled away by Damian Swan. He may go the distance. Finally, Wallace takes him down. Biff Sanders had it and then dropped it. Number 10 for Ole Miss. Well, what well, a Tim, turnaround. This is, a, this is exactly what they did last week defensively against Florida. Whenever their offense made a mistake, and they did, there were some turnovers in the red zone, back up in the red zone. This Georgia defense stepped up and held Florida only to field goals or better yet, came up with a turnover. Bakari Rambo stripped it. Bakari Rambo, 18, the senior from Augusta. Watch this. Absolutely worked it right out of there. Again, textbook. Coaches always say first guy wrap up. They had about four or five guys wrapped up, and then Rambo got his hand in there and popped it right out. Well, the All-America safety had the big pick last week as well. He's all over the place for this Georgia defense. Interception in the end zone to close that baby out. And how early for you inside the 5 to 25 yard line. Uh, this Georgia defense, I think they're starting to get that kind of confidence level in themselves. When they get put in bad situations, yep. they say, hey, no worries. We'll find a way to get that ball back. He that made, was a great example right there. I should mention that that play made by Rambo was at the end of the first half of the score last week. And Burley set sail again inside ball the 15. On the ball on the ground at the 12-yard line. Ole Miss says they have it. Rebels say they have it. And we'll wait for the officials, and they do. How about this? Talk about the uh, changing tides, and that's the happiest guy on the field. Three turnovers in the last 50 seconds. Yeah, four plays, three turnovers. That's a just another good strip. I believe that was uh, Kendichi again that started that at number was four. Kendichi, number yep. four, no doubt about it. And Wiggum, the, the recovery. Watch this. You know, 55 Wiggum. Being given credit for the recovery. And Hugh Freeze and Ole Miss excited to get that ball right back. You know, I watched that Cal Washington game last night, and there was the same thing. There were turnovers almost every play for one stretch of the ball game. Right here, you don't expect it out of these two teams. They're not teams that, that fumble the football very often. Now the Rebels have not turned it over in the red zone all year. Off the blitz, Wallace gets away. Has time looking long for Mosley, the tight end. It's picked up at midfield. Alec Ogletree comes down with it. Four turnovers in 60 seconds. <laughs> well, Ole Miss tried to catch Georgia off guard. They tried to snap it before Georgia was set, and they got some good pressure right away off the edge. That forced Bo Wallace outside and a bad decision out of his own end zone to make that throw. He had a good shot to just throw the ball in the flat. And 17 on the backside right there, that was again. Mosley. Mosley that had a chance down the middle of the field, but Bo Wallace was running away from him to the right sideline. It's a hard throw on the move to get it that far yeah. up the field. He had some safer throws right in front of him. That would have been the good call out of his own end zone. Yeah, he saw him late. He was running free, but while he was, Wallace was running for his life. Yeah, there was pressure on him. He couldn't get it to him. Oh. We will hold on to this hot potato now. Todd Gurley off the play fake. Pressure, though. Aaron Murray now is flushed. And he will do the wise thing and step out of bounds. If, if it's not down, if it's, uh, if it's not there, just throw it away or get out of bounds. That's what Mike Bobo told him, and he told us the same thing yesterday. That's a gain of two for Murray. Well, the ebb and flow of this game has changed in the last minute or so huh? yeah, but <laughs> four times in the last minute and a half yeah 
Second down and eight. Inside the 45 to the 43, about two yards shy of a first down. May have picked up five on the play. The girly three times this year, he's been the freshman of the week in the SEC, and he's earned it. This guy knows how to run that football. They're excited about his future here. Ten rushing touchdowns on the season. Third down and two. Just over five minutes left in the opening half. Gurley. Trying to cut back. He's going to be shy of the first down. That's a wonderful play by Isaac Gross, one of the truly outstanding freshmen in the SEC from Batesville, Mississippi, as a nose tackle going all of 255. You know, that penetration, that explosion up the field is what created it. And the question now is, does Mark Rick decide to go for it? He's got to have a lot of confidence in his defense. Yeah, he's going to call a timeout, it appears. You're going to think about it. Yep. Timeout. Well, certainly he felt they could run the football very well, and at times in this half they have. But the penetration of that Ole Miss defense at times has wreaked havoc on Georgia. It's been entertaining, not a lot of production the last minute. In many respects, uh, you look at this fourth down call coming up for Mark Rick. He's been confident in his run game all along, and certainly play action has been effective for him, too. What do you think here? Steve? You know, I would be surprised if they got aggressive with this play, especially because Ole Miss was hurt so badly the last time in this kind of a short yardage situation. I think, first off, for what might be the possibility here, Mark Rick might be trying to draw them off sides with the intention of just punting the football, but if nothing else, I think you might see some play action of some sort. They're in the shotgun right now, yep. early in the backfield. Marlon Brown is in the slot. Mitchell is at the bottom of the screen. And they are milking the play clock. Does get it off, and they will throw it. It's incomplete. Really well defended by Collins. Moving over from safety to corner, knocking it away from Malcolm Mitchell, and Ole Miss will get it back. Excellent. This tight coverage by DeHendrick Collins right there on the slot. Aaron Murray made a good quick decision. He did have a chance up the field with another one of his wide receivers on the outside. You could see from that last angle right there. He wanted to take the safe throw. Collins was in perfect position. Well, could, Paul Wallace was pretty excited. Let's go. Yep, let's we got it back. Time to go play, boys. Both defenses stepping up and really trying to establish control of this ball game. Go well, after the turnover fest. Ole Miss stops Georgia on downs, and here's Scott running the stretch play. Hammered by Bakari Rambo, who has picked up the pace for the Georgia defense. Isn't it amazing how the playmakers find their way to that football? I mean, he closed that gap. I thought that Scott had the edge right there, and Rambo came out of nowhere with an authoritative tackle. Had five tackles uh, Rambo did last week against the Gators, plus a sack, and as we mentioned, uh, an interception at the end of the half, his first of the year. And that sack was a first drive of the game, sack yeah. fumble led to the first score by Georgia. That pass floated on Wallace just a bit, got away with one there, intended for Jamaz Logan. Now, this is the kind of play that's going to get Bo Wallace in trouble. Now, the last three games, Coach Freeze was very happy with his performance because he was making good, solid decisions. There was no shaky decisions right there. That was a very shaky decision. That football should not have been thrown, and Bo was lucky to get away with that one. He had hit nine in a row, but he's won for his last four with a pick. Third and eight. Pressure. Down the seam for Logan, incomplete. Well defended, Damian Swan again. Outstanding closing speed on the ball. Watch the middle of the, the, the picture. You, you got, what, what, did you right there, we see the end of it with uh, Bo Wallace after he broke, but what happened up the middle was they lined up Jarvis Jones 
over the middle of the football. He came scot free down. That was a tremendous play by Damian Swan right there to break that up. But Jarvis Jones had immediate penetration on Bo Wallace, and Bo Wallace showed his athletic ability getting out of there and giving himself a chance to make a play. Broadway punts it away. And it's taken down by Mitchell, and he stopped at the 15 yard line. So he core down there to provide the coverage, making the stop for Ole Miss. Well, coming up on the Geico halftime report, Adam Zucker, along with Spencer Tillman and Tony Barnard, will get you caught up on all the scores and highlights. And uh, we'll preview a showdown in the SEC West that no one will ever forget. Number one Alabama against number five LSU. That's all coming up on the Geico halftime report. Wish all my friends. Back at Studio 43, all the best. And what a wonderful day and night of college football we have on CBS. Gurley is the setback out of the shotgun for Aaron Murray as they start at the 15-yard line. Quick look into the tight end Jay Rome and the freshman from Valdosta as it ahead to the 25-yard line. Plenty of time for Murray, a seasoned veteran. Tossed his 76th career touchdown pass last week. That was a school record. Put that game away. But uh, as we look at it, it's been a bit hot and cold this season. Ahead is Gurley. Well, that should be the first down. As we hit the three-minute mark of the first half, Mark Rick's team is down by three. Well, this game has, take, has taken a decidedly Georgia pace of play, I believe, in the last couple series. Georgia's kind of controlling the ticket more than Mississippi. There's the blitz. Nice read against it. Gurley has it. And he's finally run out of bounds. Stepped out a little earlier back at the 49 of Ole Miss. Well, this is what does make Aaron Murray the quarterback that he is right here. He read the blitz, as you said, Tim, coming off the edge. He read it very quickly, under control, made the renewer as hot receiver was. It was Gurley on the swing right out of the backfield. That's a big play because Ole Miss could not get out there to cover the speed of Gurley on the edge. After the long run, the roommate Keith Marshall comes in for Gurley. First and 10 with the ball at the 49. Murray looking downfield long. Could have been picked off. Charles Sawyer was down there. Connolly, the intended receiver, number 31. Now, uh, Charles Short Sawyer was in great position right there. And the key right here, Tim, watch him look up for that football. He looks up for the football, makes a play on the ball. If he doesn't do that, He's not going to have a chance to make that play. Number one, the receiver could go up over the top of him. Number two, he might get a flag. A quality, pass interference. quality use of the arm bar. Yeah, right? a little bit. It's exactly right. Knowing exactly, exactly where to put that hand and that arm. Second down to 10. Murray. And again, the look-in pattern is there for McGowan. That's Red McGowan, the senior from Calhoun, Georgia, that's been getting playing time recently for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that's McGowan's fourth catch of the year, but a really nice, good, quick decision by Aaron Murray right there. He had no doubt when he's on rhythm and on point with his decision making, he's pretty darn good. He's been catching everything in practice and earning more playing time as McGowan stays in the game here up at the top of your screen. A minute 45 and the clock ticking here in the opening half. One timeout remaining for the Bulldogs. Murray waits for his man and he flies wide open. And Tavius Wooten, he's got the ball at the 25-yard line and another first down. Trey Elston made the stop. Well, not only has Aaron Murray got his rhythm going right now, I think offensive coordinator Mike Bobo has been the key. He's got his rhythm play call. He's got a really good feel for what Ole Miss is doing defensively right now. He's given his quarterback a chance to make some plays. Murray now beginning to show his wares in this half. Seven completions to seven receivers. Hurley back into the game, the lone setback out of the shotgun. Malcolm Mitchell, 26, at the bottom of your screen. Everything's quick, but not quick enough that time. 
blitz coming and then help up the middle from Isaac Gross. There was help coming off the edge, but Gross got there before E.J. Epperson. And I'll tell you, they both were coming clean. They were both going to make the play. <laughs> and uh, you're exactly right. Gross got there first, Epperson off the edge. I do not know well, the, what Georgia was thinking, letting them come clean. Uh, how about the clock still ticking, too? They do have the one timeout remaining. They know they're in two-minute mode right now. They're they're actually not nearly in as bad a shape as the crowd thinks they are. Well, they're they're a little antsy, that's for sure. Second and 17. Murray in trouble again in sacks. Back at the 40. Now they're really going to let him have it. Everything was moving too slowly for this 92,000 plus crowd. Well, actually, after I saw. What happened late there, I agree with them. <laughs> Uriah Grant makes that play for Ole Miss. Ten to seven our score, and a lot of time coming off the clock, plus a lot of yardage lost by Georgia. They really lacked a sense of urgency there, Steve. Well, when I made my initial comment, there was 40 seconds still on the clock. I was saying, oh, they're, they're not going to panic here. But they let it run all the way down to 22 seconds before that ball was snapped. I, I think they needed to have a little bit more urgency than that. Now, in this situation, they're at third and 25. What they want to do, they've two sacks in a row of taking them out of field goal range. All Mark Rick wants to do now is throw a pass that'll get him around that 30 yard I mean, line or better. I know they wanted to hold the timeout for the kick. I get that. But still, a lot of time coming off the clock. Exactly. They only have one chance to get into field goal range. And now Georgia is deciding to use the timeout. Or Ole Miss, I beg your pardon, has chosen to take a timeout. Georgia holds on to theirs. We'll be back. Marshall Morgan is uh, warming up. He had uh, a horrible try earlier in this game, but um, you know everybody has a bad kick from time to time. He certainly wants to get uh, a little closer for an opportunity at a legitimate field goal try to close the half. Yeah, that last kick he made, I was ducking up here for that one. But right now, the problem that Georgia has, they cannot get a first down unless they pick up 25 yards, so they've got to throw it to the sidelines. Murray in some trouble, flushed. Look at that, wide open, touchdown, Tavares King. That'll bring the crowd around. Uh, that is an absolute backbreaker for Ole Miss. I have no idea what they were doing in that situation. They let King get wide open down the sideline, and I just didn't think Andy Aaron Murray would have enough arm strength to get it out there, but he proved me wrong. He got it out there. I saw him running free. Can't understand the busting coverage well, by Ole Miss. Again, a reminder, this is a young secondary to start with. They're without Sinquez Golston. They're without Wesley Pendleton. They're patchwork back there, and they're awfully young, and they showed it here. This was nothing fancy. Aaron Murray was just trying to keep the play alive a little bit. It was a straight two deep coverage. The safety got caught up inside. That was the freshman, Trey Elston, who got pulled inside and could not get back outside to cover the outside half of the field. A great play by Aaron Murray. Uh, fantastic throw by Murray. And he's a happy camper now. And frankly, they needed that because it was going to be a rough halftime after what had happened the first 40 Boy. seconds there. Well, right there is Trey Elston. Watch him. He gets sucked inside. I really don't know why Ole Miss went to a traditional two deep coverage. That's a lot of pressure on a freshman quarter uh, safety. Look at him right there in the middle. They got all this field outside. That's where King goes. Look how open he is right now. And then Murray makes some pay with a nice throw. If they're going to play too deep coverage, they've got to let that freshman know you've got to stay deeper than the deepest and make, give yourself an ability to make the break inside or outside to make the tackle. Uh, Elston was completely turned around. He was. He had his shoulders squared up inside, could not pivot and get out quick enough. I think they should have played a three deep type of coverage or even four across in what we would call a quarters look to not let someone get behind you like that and put so much pressure on the young safety. Boy, this has been a whoosh the last 10 minutes of this really? game, hasn't it? Really? <laughs> 14 unanswered now for the Bulldogs. 
Well, that squib is taken by the tight end Allen, and he's going to be knocked down at the 37. And we've come to the intermission. Tavares King with the big touchdown reception to close out this half and really change the mindset as these two teams make their way into the locker room. But it's going to take a lot of points, one would think, to win this football game. I agree 100 percent, Tim. And Hugh Freeze, he's going to motivate this team to come out ready to play. But that is a backbreaker way to end the first half. That hurts. They played so well. Let's go down to Marty Snyder, who's standing by with Coach Mark Rick. Well, Mark, it was a slow start. You guys certainly turned it around. I guess, how do they turn it around? And talk about that play from Aaron Murray. Right. Well, it's a, it's a good ball game. They're a very good football team. We're not shocked by that. They're playing well. Our guys are starting to bow up a little bit and play better. Uh, that last play, we are just looking to take a shot in the end zone. If it wasn't there, we knew we had another fourth down to take another shot with just a couple seconds on the clock, and I'm glad the first one went in. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Yes, sir. Tim? All right, Marty. That's the end of the first half. The Georgia Bulldogs with a 14 to 10 lead. Now let's go to Adam Zucker in our New York studio. Adam? All right, thanks, Tim. Coming up here on the Geico Halftime Report, Spencer, Tony, and I will have all of today's action, including Florida, just impressive enough to be in position to clinch the East if Georgia stumbles after this word from your local station. Wallace with plenty of time. That pass is caught. Threaded the needle on the corner. Over the middle to the tight end. Touchdown, Jamal Mosley. Play fake, and it is wide open. Look at that. Wide open. Touchdown. Tavares King. Our score at halftime as we open the third quarter, 14 to 10. Georgia with the lead. Let's go downstairs live. Marty Snyder standing by with Hugh Freeze of Ole Miss. Fresh from the locker room. And Hugh, what did you say to the kids? And how do you recover from a big play like that at the end of the half? Well, it would be a great judge of our character, you know, because uh, we pride ourselves on playing 60 minutes, a great effort. And, and uh, you know, I expect them to do that. We've got to forget that and play the next play. You know, don't blink. It's a, you know, awful play. We've got three young freshmen back there. and. They kind of did their own thing, and that uh, certainly hurts. And we've given them two big plays for their two scores. But, you know, you can't, uh, that's over with. Let's move forward. Let's play this half. Let's go win this one. Tim, as he told me, we gave him two freebies. We can't afford that in the second half. You're right. Two touchdowns measuring over 106 yards on those big plays. But, Steve, Mrs. Ole Miss had their moments defensively in this half. They did. And I'll tell you, if, if you ask Hugh Freeze before the game how he would feel about being 14 to 10 at the half, he'd probably say, I'll take it right now. But it was a great effort defensively by Ole Miss, with the exception of those two big plays. They had a lot of hits on Aaron Murray, a lot of big-time hits. But Murray came back, the good play action pass called right there to free Marlon Brown for the big one. And then at the end of the half, 12 seconds left in the half, buying some time to complete that pass down the sideline to King. That was huge for Georgia. Let's look at the stats there. Story is not always told by the stats, but look at that second quarter yards by Georgia, 203 yards, the two big plays that were really the difference for Georgia. That's the 14 points as you referred to, Tim. Yeah. I'm a little surprised that we've had nine sacks in this game by both defenses. I mean, as quickly as these quarterbacks get rid of the ball. Yes, but that, that's a tribute to the defensive coordinators and the schemes today. They've got very athletic defensive fronts. And Georgia, I think, really found something last week against Florida with their zone dog scheme. They've been doing it very effectively today to put pressure on Bo Wallace. Georgia won the toss and deferred, so they get the double whammy, the big touchdown to close out the half, plus the ball to open the second. Malcolm Mitchell is back deep, and this one will be taken three yards deep, and he'll bring it out. Mitchell stopped right at the 20-21 yard line. That's where the dogs will take on the ball first down. Well, this is, uh, when you think about it, uh, a great opportunity here to take advantage of deferring at the start of this game. This drive could, could tell us a lot, couldn't it? It worked perfectly for Mark Rick. Yeah, they, they had the big play at the end of the first half, then all of a sudden the ball back. So Ole Miss has got to step up. But I'll tell you, but, but one thing I do know is that Ole Miss has played great defense in the second half this year, only allowing 32 points in their four SEC games, only three points they've given up in the third quarter. So they have come out of the halftime break, usually playing good D. Gurley behind Ogletree, and that pass is incomplete. Intended for Tavares King, well defended by Charles Sawyer, one of those freshmen, uh, of course, uh, that we talked about, Trey Elston. He and Sawyer and uh, 
Some of the other youngsters, Mike Hilton, have had their moments. But again, they're being asked to do a lot with the loss of a couple of veterans. Uh, Wesley Pendleton and Sinquest Golson in today's game. Second and ten. Fancy, but not much gain, just a couple of yards, if that. Well, a little surprising to some extent, perhaps, uh, that this Ole Miss defense has been as good as they have been between the tackles. No doubt. They, they have stepped up to the challenge. This is a Georgia team that ran the ball very effectively against Florida, the number three ranked rushing team in the SEC. They had not given up a 100 yard rusher. Last week, Georgia did that. Today, a lot of people felt they'd be able to run right at Ole Miss, but it's been a pretty good effort by Ole Miss. You're right. And remember, against Alabama, the Ole Miss defense uh, put it itself nicely. There's a nice catch by Brown and a missed tackle that was costly by Elston. He just whiffed, and Brown made him pay. 17-yard pickup and a first down. There you see the first half possessions. There were some turnovers late. But those two touchdown passes, both on third down, four completions of 20 yards plus, eight completions to eight different receivers for Aaron Murray. Yeah. Here's Murray again. A hit for a couple of yards, and that's all. So well, give him three. It was uh, Gilbert Pena, number 99, making the stop. Sometimes, Tim. Even when you have the right defense call, players have to step up and make plays. That third and long that the Bulldogs just converted. Trey Elson, the freshman, again, was in great position to make a tackle for no gain. He missed the tackle. Georgia first down. They keep the drive going. Second and seven. McGowan, right in front of uh, DeHendrick Collins, who's playing that corner position, normally a safety. Again, forced into that because of the loss of Golston. Uh, Golston. Uh, with some uh, concussion issues, concussive uh, symptoms over the week from that Arkansas game, unable to go today. Keith Marshall's come in at the running back position, the lone setback with Murray in the shotgun. First and 10 from the 42 of Ole Miss. Pressure on the blitz and looking long for Mitchell. Touchdown! They picked on Collins again, and Murray made them pay. I'll tell you, Tim, we have the Georgia coaches right next door to us here, and Mike Bobo about jumped through the roof when he saw Malcolm Mitchell get the nice release on the outside. Had a great release against the Hendrick Collins, and what a great throw by Aaron Murray. Bobo was yelling for him to get it up, get it up. And he did right on the money. Perfect throw. Morgan for the extra point. Three touchdown passes in this game. All, all over 40 yards for Aaron Murray. Malcolm Mitchell in man coverage. Just a go route. There he went. And to Hendrick Collins had no answer for him. Aaron Murray with the big play, and the Bulldogs extend their lead to double digits between the hedges in Athens, Georgia. Murray's three touchdown passes have covered 148 yards. It's 21 to 10, and uh, Steve, it's time now for a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Well, it was three big pass plays. The first one on third and eight was a key missed tackle by the freshman, Trey Elston. Right here in the open field, you're going to see him come. Oh, if he makes that tackle, they're punting. But he didn't make the tackle. It's a first down for Malcolm Brown, and then the completion to McGowan on the outside for another first down, and then the big one, the ninth. Right on the money from Aaron Murray for the big touchdown to Malcolm Mitchell. You know, that, that touchdown pass that he threw, as you look at the scoring drive, six plays, 79 yards. We were discussing quarterbacks that Aaron Murray emulates, and he mentioned Drew Brees. There's been question about heights. That time, he he threw the ball big. He looked up, head up, and he, he says that that's someone he's always compared himself with favorably. Well, that's a good guy to compare yes, yourself with, and I think it's pretty accurate. I think it's a good a good role model for him, similar styles. 
whether or not Aaron's going to get a chance to make the jump to the next level. We'll see. He's throwing the ball to nine different receivers, which is a lot like Drew Brees would do in the ball game. But, you know, the one thing I did like right there, he identified the coverage before the snap, saw the good coverage on the outside, knew he had his go-to receiver one-on-one, -on -one, and he made the great throw. Jamie Lindley will boot this one away, the senior from Savannah, Georgia. That one well through the end zone. Ole Miss will have it at the 25. Tomorrow, it's doubleheader day on the NFL on CBS. First, the Broncos battle the Bengals. The Dolphins take on the Colts, or the Bills challenge the Texans. Then Big Ben and the Steelers tangle with Eli Manning and the Giants. It all starts with J.B., Dan, Coach, Shannon, and Boomer on the NFL Today, presented by Southwest Airlines. We'll see how this young Rebels team reacts. Uh, for the first time down by double digit points on the road in the SEC. Randall Mackey and Jeff Scott are both in the backfield with Bo Wallace. I love what Hugh Freeze said coming out of the half though. They got to let it go. Now this is another challenge that big touchdown they gave up. Scott. Quick out pattern ahead to the 30. Pick up a five, maybe six. Marlo Herrero with the tackle, the sophomore from College Park, Georgia. Wallace was streaky in the first half, had as many as nine consecutive passes, but then struggled a bit. Got a little antsy with the ball, made a couple of uh, mistakes, and Georgia made him pay. There's Scott. Looked like it might open, and then all of a sudden, the avenue was cut off by Garrison Smith, 56 for Georgia. And this is where we're going to see what Bo Wallace is made of, not only on this third and four right here, but this whole second half. Yeah. This is a big time environment with a lot at stake. I mean, they know if they win this ball game, they're bowl eligible against Georgia in Athens. SEC, I'll tell you, there's so many things at stake here. We'll see if Bo Wallace can answer the challenge. Wallace's pass for Jamez Logan. It's on the ground. Is it incomplete or a fumble? Are we going to rule it incomplete? Brandon Smith with the pop, and uh, Ole Miss will be forced to punt. Well, I think this is the correct call. I don't think the Logan ever brought the ball in completely. No, you're right. Nice hit on the outside by Brandon Smith. Textbook, and he was going to be stopped short of the first down either way. Rhett McGowan is... Uh, Back deep for Georgia, number 27. Jim Broadway to punt it away. Beautiful punt and a fair catch called for by McGowan at the 23 yard line. Dogs got it to open the half and went 79 yards in six plays. They get their second attempt. When we come back, 11.35 remaining in the third quarter. Georgia leads by 11. Indeed, and uh, certainly McCarron is someone to keep an eye on. Uh, Colin Klein as well. All the precincts have uh, reported, I think, from a defensive standpoint, Manti Teo is legitimate. But they have had a struggle today from Pittsburgh. Uh, what do you think about A.J. McCarron's legitimacy? I think he's legitimate. He's playing for the best team in the country. He's having an almost perfect season. If they do finish undefeated, he doesn't throw any interceptions. I don't know how you could expect yeah. anybody to do any better. He says uh, Heisman Schmeisman. Uh, Uga could care less. Yeah, he, that's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Keith Marshall in the backfield. Out of the shotgun, Aaron Murray. Took the wind out of Ole Miss's sails at the end of the first half and then to open the second. On the check down, he gets it to Marshall. That's another first down. Cody Pruitt knocks him out. Three big touchdown passes from Aaron Murray. You see the great ball fake there and just flipped it out to Marlon Brown for the first big touchdown. Then right there again, the dagger at the end of the first half. And then finally on the last one, the best throw of the day from Aaron Murray on the money to Mitchell for the big score to go up 21 to 10. This old Miss interior has handled themselves nicely today, but the secondary has taken its lumps. And right away, it's Marlon Brown again. Inside the 40 at the 35. Easy pickings now for Aaron Murray, and Brown is hurt. Trey Elston with a stop. That's uh, 10 different receivers now for Murray. That's a 30-yard game. One of the things that I'm sure concerns 
Hugh Freeze now is that his defense, particularly as thin as they are in the secondary, they, they better come up with at least a stop, hold them to three here, and he may have to play fourth down football the rest of the half because he's got to keep his defense off the field. Doesn't he, he? He's got to keep his defense off yeah. the field. They're, they're, they're shredding him right yeah, now. They really are. Critical series coming up, and we'll check on Marlon Brown when we come back. Brown being worked on along the sidelines. Been very effective uh, with four catches in this game, and he's been. Listen, this is how George has taken control of this game. They have the last 11 first downs. It all really began with the turnover fest, and then ultimately it led to that uh, incredible touchdown relinquished by Ole Miss to Tavares King to close out the half. And, and that, I think, is really, we're still seeing the after effect of that. And Brown, hope he does, he can get back in this ball game. He's having a super day over 100 yards receiving, but Ole Miss has got to start turning the tide here. Murray caught. That's Rome, the tight end. Well, Mark Rick told us yesterday, and so did his offensive coordinator. They're happy with these tight ends. They think they can get the job done with them. And they're really happy with their quarterback today, too. That's his 14th completion today. He's well over 300 yards and about 340 yards on the day after a slow start. That was a 19-yard pickup. Marshall is tripped up. Good penetration there by Ole Miss defensively by Jason Jones. Second down for Georgia. Let's take a look at the Verizon red zone. Ogletree is the fullback. And he's the check down receiver inside the 10 and roll down at the eight yard line. Pick up a five for the Bulldogs. But this is an area where Ole Miss has really played good defense all year holding their opponents in the red zone to less than 50% of the time scoring touchdowns. The problem is they're going against a really good red zone offense in Georgia. 71% of the time they come away with touchdowns. That's right up near the top of the SEC. Yeah, they ruled him down really at the eight yard line. So Darius Bryant made the tackle third down and two. Lynch is the motion man, the tight end. And right up the gap, Ogletree, touchdown! Uh, it's fairly clear that nobody on the Ole Miss defense was expecting Ogletree to get this ball. He ran right by everybody before they even realized that he had the football. He is a blocking back, a true fullback in every sense. I think all eyes were on Gurley, and uh, what a great call by Mike Bobo once again. Morgan's extra point is good. Georgia's fourth touchdown on a third down play. Two drives, two touchdowns. Georgia by 18. A reminder, help the victims of disasters like Superstorm Sandy. Text Red Cross to 900999 to make a $10 donation to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund. CBS Games. 28 to 10 now. Georgia has taken control of this one in Athens. And another quick scoring drive. 218 off the clock, six plays, 77 yards. And Alexander Ogletree with the uh, summation taking it in you want to know how rare it is for alexander ogletree to get the football <laughs> i just checked all the oh, stats yeah. i've got he that's his first carry of the year yeah right there so he's caught a few passes he's but caught not, a few passes yeah. but not running the football so nobody in this stadium expected to see him that that's good oh yeah solid play calling He's a, one of the things that uh, Coach Priest, uh, Hugh Priest for Ole Miss said that George does a great job of is self-scouting themselves. And I think that was a good example of that. He's in there because of an injury to Merritt Hall, usually the starting fullback. And a great moment for the junior from Noonan, Georgia, one of the brothers Ogletree. And you can tell how much the uh, teammates are happy for him getting the opportunity to carry the ball and carry it over the 
through the end zone. Touchback. Ole Miss will have it at the 25. Time now for the duck. Why not? Who replaced Archie Manning and Eli Manning as quarterbacks at Ole Miss? That's our AFLAC trivia question. Now that'll make you think. <laughs> I'm not even going to throw a guess out there. Well, I, I I'm, old, no I'm old clue. Well, I'm old enough to have a really good handle on the replacement for, for Archie, but uh, I must admit, Eli, that's a different story. Barry Brunetti has come in at quarterback for this drive for the Rebels. And this is a very important sequence here for Ole Miss. It really is. A, a touchdown. You still got over nine minutes up to the third quarter. A good drive here with a touchdown. Puts them right back in and gets their confidence back up and makes them believe they can get it done. Now they got to find a way to keep their defense off the field. Brunetti ahead for a healthy gain of seven, maybe eight. Alec Ogle three rustles him down. You're, you're exactly right on that, Tim, that the fact that the Georgia defense our Georgia offense has worn down that Ole Miss offense. They, the Ole Miss defense, excuse me, Georgia on O, Ole Miss on D. It's been going all Georgia for a long time. No first downs for Ole Miss in the last 16 minutes of this ballgame. That's Jeff Scott, and he ends that stat. Finally comes to a close as he's ahead for a first down. And that's one of the knots against this up-tempo offense that Hugh Freeze runs, that any team runs, the spread type stuff. Oregon's doing it. A lot of other teams around the country doing it. Is that it puts the defense on the field a lot of the ball game. They move so quickly, they're either in the end zone quickly or they're off the field third down quickly. Puts a lot of pressure on that defense and never get fresh. Scott again ahead for a couple. Let's go down to Marty Snyder. He's got some updates on injuries for us. Well, first, the update on Marlon Brown. Its return is questionable. It's a left knee injury. That knee actually wrapped in ice right now. Chris Burnett, the offensive lineman for Georgia. He is out for the rest of the day with a left shoulder contusion, Tim. I'm going to make this suggestion to you, Steve. Thank you, Marty, that uh, from this point of the field forward, knowing what I do about Hugh Freeze's style of play, it's four down territory right now. Well, we're going to see. We'll see. On second and eight, Brunetti again. Playing the role of Wildcat quarterback here. And again, look at the young man just won't go down. About two yards shy of a first down. Kwame Gathers, 99, taking it to the turf. Yeah, Brunetti's rushed for 163 yards on the season. Yes, he has. As a quarterback, 34 rushes, two touchdowns. He's throwing the ball pretty decently as well. Junior from Memphis, Tennessee. You see the third down conversion story. Two out of eight. Brunetti in traffic. Loses some ground and fumbles the ball on the way out of bounds. Taken out of the air by Swan, and he's down at midfield. Uh, just what you could not afford to have happen. Are you kidding me? I, I have never seen a play more bizarre than that in my uh, life, I don't think. I, he, he was right on the sideline. No one hit him. It was almost like he was tossing it to the, he just lost control yeah. of it. He was stretching to try to make the first down and simply lost the handle. Not, not related to anything no. anybody else did. He just lost control of the football. Second and fumble. Swan said thank you very yeah. much. Second fumble recovery for Swan today. The, exactly what uh, Ole Miss could not afford to have happen in today's game. Put the ball on the ground. They have been able to do a nice job of keeping from doing that the last two wins in the SEC against Auburn and in Arkansas. Marshall, a little flea flicker. Murray looking long and it's incomplete. And I think he took a pop. Aaron Murray slow to get up. He did take a pop right in the ribs. You're going to see the pressure. A good job by the safeties right there at the top of the screen for Ole Miss. They did not bite too much. But look at the shot that Murray takes right there. Sir Darius Bryant, I think, got him right in the midsection. That one hurt. But the Rebel secondary was uh, there for the answer that time. Second and ten. 
Quick pitch, Russell. Headed for the boundary and tackle. I know that hurts you, uh, uh, Steve, but that hurts badly. But this it, this was a trap game weekend. It really was. Uh, Lou Holtz uh, called it mm -hmm. and, and uh, predicted this was going to be a tough one. Here's Murray now on third down. Commercial. Yet another rip at the sideline, and he may have enough. Of the, did he step out of bounds? I think he may have. At the 45-yard line. The, uh, the other thing that concerns me about that Notre Dame game is that Notre Dame is not a come-from-behind team at this true. point. Yeah. They are built to, 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 to be in control, play with the lead, and let their defense go. So fourth down, and uh, Ole Miss, after the turnover, sees their defense come out and stiffen. And this Marvin Mead is back deep for Ole Miss. It's the first stop for this Ole Miss defense in a long time. And a pooch punt coming for Adam Erickson. He's their pooch guy. Wanted to get that one to land like a nine iron, but it didn't into the end zone for the touchback. Well, the Rebels got it out to near midfield before Brunetti fumbled. I think the key play in this game was when the Sanders had the catch inside the 10 and then fumbled the football. And obviously, had Ole Miss held onto the ball there, they would have gone back up two scores. I, I agree. I think that was a huge play. I also think that the play at the end of the half, giving up oh, yeah. six points on no third doubt. and 25 with right. 12 seconds left. 45-yard touchdown pass. That first turnover by the Rebels on inside oh. the 10 was their first inside the red zone all year. And Wallace nearly had that one picked off. Right to Sean Williams. The senior could not bring it in. Now that would have been the, the nail in the coffin right there, I think, because Sean Williams, if he catches this ball, which he should have, it's a touchdown for Georgia. The Rebels offense has been reeling. They need a decent series here if they want to stay in this football game. And there's Scott jitterbugging his way past the initial hit. And then again, the speed of Sean Williams, the safety, dragging him down. Tim, I was excited to see Bo Wallace. What I had seen on film, especially last week against Arkansas, he stepped up and played at a very high level. Today, I just haven't seen anything yeah. yet that's made me say, wow. Give credit to Georgia on yeah. defense, but... Those Georgia linebackers have, I think, played very well today for their defense. Wallace really burned Arkansas's last week. Third down in traffic. Again, able to keep the play alive. There's that athleticism we were speaking of, Steve, and uh, he just keeps plays alive. He's going to be very close to a first down. It looks like they marked it about a yard short, but look, he's a big, strong dude, and you watch him. He, he breaks out of the tackle right there and gets to the sideline. Still going to be a yard short, and this is where you see a... Well, your, your man Hugh Freeze is not going for yeah. this particular time inside I, his own 30. Yeah, he at this stage, you don't want to put the game on the line. I, I think they need to be about outside the 40 to make it four down territory. Yeah, I, I think in that situation, fourth and short, he definitely would have gone for it anywhere near midfield. Jim Broadway to put it away. Gets it off inside his 20 yard line and McGowan is back deep. Fair catch at the 31 yard line. Time for our Aflac trivia answer. Cue the duck. Affleck! Who replaced Archie uh, and uh, Eli as quarterback at Ole Miss? Norris Weiss in 71, oh. who later backed up Elway in Denver. Then, of course, Ethan Flatt. Ethan Flatt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, Ethan, but I just don't remember. Yeah, I must tell you, uh, Norris Weiss I remember. Well, and, uh, and it really had a a very solid career that means 50 percent of our booth remembers <laughs> only because i'm old enough <laughs> todd Gurley dotting the eye behind ogletree who had his first touchdown and first carry a little earlier and there goes Gurley again between the tackles and again we talked about this old miss defense now a bit fatigued and we'll see how they can hold up an 11 yard gain how about Weiss and Flatt and the job they did? Well, remember now, they didn't throw the ball a lot back in the day. That's the year that Norris replaced Archie. And uh, and for Flatt, a little different story. 
But he was playing for Coach Cutcliffe, remember, so they did throw it around a little bit more than Coach Vaught. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> again, I, I really cannot comment. I've got no, <laughs> no basis to start from. Again, it's nice to be old and remember. <laughs> Here's Gurley again. Uh, he's really good at cutbacks. Now, the uptime, nice defensive work by Channing Ward, number 11, freshman from Aberdeen, Mississippi. But Gurley, for such a big back, and he's coming off gingerly, has a great cutback ability. He does, and I, I, I think he got hurt on the play before that, Tim. He got bent back in an awkward position. Uh, I hope it's nothing serious, but he is a great cutback runner. Well, Malcolm has come in for him, and that pass is caught by Rome, the tight end. Stop shy of the 45-yard line by Chief Brown, another freshman, free safety, number eight from Winona, Mississippi. What we're seeing here now, these last two series, is it seems like the Ole Miss defense has gotten a little bit more of a feel going on how to shut down Georgia. They're changing up a few things that are giving them more of the edge. You got a third and nine, third and eight situation here, which is exactly what the defense would take every single time out there. Their, their problem has been limit, trying to eliminate the big play. Up front, uh, they've done a decent job for the most part. But those throws of over 40 yards have been real killers. There's Malcolm. He's ahead to the 49-yard line, so Georgia plays a conservative and will uh, play field position at this stage. C.J. Johnson, number 10, very active, hybrid defensive end making the tackle. That young man's got a future. Johnson is going to be heard from for a long time in this league. Yes, and, and uh, everybody we talked to at Ole Miss said the same thing, that he truly is uh, an NFL prospect in every way. In fact, Mark Richt uh, told us that he is just naturally strong all the way across the board. Colin Barber's boot. Full catch call for That was a mistake by Neat. He did not get over to it, and the ball bounded inside the five, and now Ole Miss will really be backed up. It would have been tough for him to get there on the angle that the punt was coming from, a 49-yard boot. But you had to know that there was a chance not to get there. It would have been a tough play to try to retrieve it, but boy, oh boy, for Ole Miss to be stuck inside the five-yard line at this stage of the game, it could be uh, lights out if there's a mistake here. Well, he's got to step up and make a play. Stop at nearly the goal line, spun down at the two. Jarvis Jones, the first to get there. Now, we haven't called his name a lot today, but he always affects the way the game is being played. He really does. He, he created some issues early in the ball game, but I, I can promise you that there's no one on the field that Ole Miss is more aware no, yeah. of than Jarvis Jones. And sometimes that takes him out of the game, but it frees up his teammates. Just ask Florida how yeah. much he can affect the ball game. Uh, Jeff Driscoll knows. A dangerous move here, Scott. Not out of the end zone. That should be a safety. It is. Alec Ogletree. One Ogletree, a touchdown. Another says, I'll see you and take the deuce. Well, that's another one of the issues with the spread offense, and Hugh Freeze will admit to this, I'm sure. When you get backed up in a situation where you've got to run the football, it's just not conducive to it. This is a bad decision, though, by Jeff Scott. You can see the outside leverage by Ogletree and also safety support coming up by Brandon Smith. He's got to tuck that ball up inside, just get it out of the end zone. You can't try and bounce it outside when you're backed up in your own end zone against a fast defense like Georgia. I mean, look at that. Can't get out there. It's a good, solid play. You see Jarvis Jones taking on the block, and right there, they've got leverage. Just pop it up inside. Yep. Get what you can get. And in fact, I thought if I were coaching Scott myself, Jarvis Jones was in position to get kicked out by his offensive lineman. That run by Scott should have come up inside his polling guard, yep. inside of Jarvis Jones. That's where the play is designed to go. Understanding time and score for a young team Sometimes uh, you see that. Exactly. I mean, it's 
It's also an awareness of being in a big situation oh, yeah. like that, knowing what to do. Jeff Scott, I think, is a tremendous running back. He's had a great year. I just think right there, you're backed up in your own end zone. You got him. The one thing you can't do in this situation is trying to bounce it outside and get caught in the end zone. So a touchdown by an ogle tree, a safety by an ogle tree, and 30 straight points now for this Bulldogs team. Rice and Rose is going to kick it away. They um, opt for the placement. And it's in from the 17 yard line. Ahead to the 37, so a 20 yard return. And it's now time for a Red Lobster Scholar Athlete. And there they are Joel Kite. Journalism major, three-time SEC All-Academic Honor Roll member. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the Ole Miss General Scholarship Fund. And there he is live. Young man working hard and uh, may one day be uh, documenting what's taking place on the football field later on in his years. Keith Marshall now is the eye back for Georgia. First down just outside the 36. He's ahead for two. Isaac Gross made the stop. It'll be second down at eight. Third quarter winding down and while George has taken control of this game. Remember how fast this Ole Miss team likes to play. They simply need to get some field position and have something positive happen and happen soon. Well, with the 20-point lead, we're going to see George do more of what they're doing right now, I believe. Pounding up in there, keep that clock running. Their defense is playing so well right now that uh, I think Bobo and staff got to feel pretty comfortable. We've come to the end of the third quarter. And we'll return to Sanford Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching... The Home Depot SEC on CBS. score by quarter Ole Miss out to a frenetic pace early but it's been all Georgia since then 30 unanswered points Tim Brando Steve Berline the Georgia defense really asserted itself from the third quarter on they have they, they, they've really shown their athleticism their athletic ability their strength they're a stronger deeper football team than Ole Miss when you really analyze they're bigger they're more physical and you can see by the way they're taking it to this Ole Miss team now finding ways to pop the ball out when they need to make a play their defense is stepping up and Ole Miss is kind of crumbling in these situations where they cannot have bad plays. They're having the worst play possible. It's not only a bad play, but it's the worst thing that can happen in that particular situation. Hard to win a football game when you're doing that. Second down and eight. You see those takeaways and sacks for that Georgia defense and what they've been able to do, particularly in this second half. And it all began really with the turnover fest in the second quarter. An opportunity really for Ole Miss taken away and then Georgia really hammered him with that touchdown pass to King before the break. That pass is caught by Malcolm Mitchell. A couple of yards shy of the first down. Maybe more like a yard away from the first down. So a gain of nine. Or, or eight will call it third down and one. Quarterback sneak. And uh, Nothing doing up the middle by Murray. And I don't think he got it, Tim. No, I don't either. Third down and short coming up. You know, the way that Georgia lines up for their quarterback sneak, uh, this is a, something I noticed on film. It, they give it away when they're going to sneak it. The, the running back comes up right behind Aaron Murray. That's why I called it out before the snap. I yep. mean, George, the, the Ole Miss defense has got to know it as well. Yeah, that's a big, big stop for Ole Miss. They need the football back as soon as possible, and it will force Colin Barber into the game to punt it out. 
And this is exactly the right call. There, there's no hesitation from Mark Richt with a 20 point lead. The last thing you want to do is give Ole Miss a short field to work with if you don't get it. Yeah, he, he's not going to get greedy here. There's too much at stake. A win today and a win against Auburn, and they are in the SEC championship game. Neat takes it in at the 17 yard line. Rebels will have it. Bo Wallace has been really good in his last two SEC games. He needs a great fourth quarter. Ole Miss took the football and went downfield to get this field goal from 34 yards for Bryson Rose. Then Bo Wallace to Mosley, the tight end for a 10 to nothing lead. Big plays then were in order for Georgia. Wonderful play fake. And then the touchdown pass to Marlon Brown. It was a home run trot from that point forward. And then Murray right before the half to the Forest King. That's the biggest play of the game so far to make it 14 to 10. More of the same in the third quarter as Malcolm Mitchell was on the receiving end of this touchdown pass to make it 21 to 10. Then the answer inside Alec Ogletree. First carry, first six. And then the other Ogletree with the safety sack of Scott in the backfield and our score now 30 to 10 here in the fourth quarter. Those miscues, I think, advantage Georgia, even though they turned it over too. It went both ways, but Ole Miss was in a position to where they could have really taken advantage, and they had to. Hugh Freeze, as we said before the game, told us he had to play perfectly. That would mean protecting the football and creating turnovers well. Whenever they got the opportunity, they made a mistake right there, Bo Wallace trying to force a play up the field when he didn't need to to give a, a team that has got more experience maybe superior physically as well and more comfort being in this position you give them those many that that many opportunities they're going to take advantage Randall Mackey and uh, Jeff Scott are in the backfield with Bo Wallace as we come back to play here in the fourth quarter that strip by Bakari Rambo of Sanders was inside the 10 yard line after that completion there's Scott that's the way they love to utilize him with that uh, cat quick ability of his. He's beyond the 25 yard line to out near the 27. That's the first down. 10 yard pickup on the opening play. Mackey is in motion. And on the zone lead, it's Scott right up to the 30 yard line, a gain of three. Second and seven. Tackle made by Sanders Cummings. Well, Hugh Freeze definitely not panicking at this point, still staying within his ball. His tempo is usually so quick they can stay within the floor of their normal game plan, run the football a little bit. He's gaming and dealing. That's the way he is. That pass was underthrown, intended for Dante Moncrief. They've been unable to get him on track in this game, and I think that's been another one of the issues for Bo Wallace. I think that what Georgia has done, Todd Grantham in particular, the defensive coordinator, He's stepping up and putting his defense in the right position to take away what Ole Miss is trying to do right there. That was a contested throw to Moncrief. Yeah. Not a clean lane for Bo Wallace to get the ball to him. And that's the way it's been most of the day. Third down and seven. Ole Miss looking to get into Georgia territory for the first time. Now that is a call that would have you believe they may be thinking four down territory, but it looks as though the punt team is coming out. Yeah, pretty bizarre, if yeah. you ask me. Uh, you know, third and seven, you call it the quarterback draw right up the gut. Uh, it didn't even look like a draw. It looked like it was a quarterback run yeah, right up the middle. Run. And he's hurt. Looks yeah, like he, he's holding he, that right arm down. Yeah, he's dangling it yes, kind of gingerly. He'll be uh, checked on as he goes to the sidelines. So again, Ole Miss comes up empty, and Broadway will have to punt it. And again, a three and out, putting yep. their defense back on the field right away. Rhett McGowan is back deep. Fair catch at the 23-yard line. Bulldogs are in total control. That's a 44-yard boot, no return. 30 to 10.
30 to 10 our score Georgia with the lead and let's go down to Marty Snyder who has more on Ole Miss's first year head coach Hugh Freeze. Yeah and people may have first heard of him from the movie The Blind Side. He was the real life coach of Michael Orr at Briarcrest Christian School in Memphis Tennessee. The two are still very close today. They text and talk two to three times a week but what Coach Freeze loves is when Michael Orr comes home for the summers and once a week at least once a week his wife Jill cooks his favorite home cooked meal pasta and shrimp. I asked Coach Freeze you ever get sick of eating pasta and shrimp in the summer. He said, no, I just love it because Michael is home. And Tim, I checked. We're all invited. We can come over one day. We just pick the day. We're going over to the Freeze house. We're having a little pasta and shrimp. How's that sound? I'm fine with that. <laughs> I've got relatives near there. Let's stop by and visit. Have some dinner. Hot girly in the gate of the backfield. There's a little flip. Reverse action going to Malcolm Mitchell. And he's ahead to the 30-yard line. You know, Hugh Freeze had a great statement when he took the job. And Archie Manning uh, was the guy that led the search committee, our friend and colleague, and, of course, Ole Miss great. He said, uh, I want to eliminate the negativity, compete passionately, but by year two, I want this Ole Miss program to be relevant. I want to be in the conversation about winning a Western division. And they are. Yeah. I mean, as far as expectation to win the Western division, not yet. But they're showing they are relevant. They're heading that direction. And you expect them to keep getting better each year. Second and three now for Murray, who has had an outstanding day. He has responded after what he thought was a sketchy performance last week in victory against Florida. And Gurley takes it ahead to about the 32-yard line. Now those standings in the West, and you see Alabama controls it all, but if LSU wins, that'll change things. They played tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Vern, Gary, and Tracy ready to bring you that one later tonight. Texas A&M, how good did they look in Starkville today? Johnny Manziel just put on another show. I'm impressed with that kid. Ole Miss still has uh, an opportunity with Vanderbilt. Close it out with Mississippi State as they try to get bowl eligible. And they're sandwiched between those two is LSU. That's right. It's November 17th. Quick out. And again, isolated. Pretty good defensive play by Charles Sawyer to make the stop of Chris Conley. Ahead for five and a first down. And Tim, this might surprise people, but we talked to Mark Richt about what he would like to see out of that game tonight. LSU Alabama he said hey the only way we can get to the national championship game is if Alabama beats LSU and is undefeated in that SEC championship see game. I, I disagree with that and, and, and coaches live in an insular world and I'll, I'll discuss that with you in just a minute that's the 11th different receiver by the way with Conley's catch that Murray has used he has just been pretty impressive carving this Ole Miss uh, secondary apart in the second half early ahead for two see Notre Dame is already in trouble with Pitt Kansas State's got a lot of football to play. And Oregon, hello, they still have a few games to play, plus a conference championship game. Uh, I think there's a very good chance that everyone could have a loss. And your chances, perhaps, against a one-loss LSU or a one-loss anyone might be better than dealing with an undefeated Alabama. Well, <laughs> if you're Georgia. You, you, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, that, that is 100% right. But I think... In his mind, he's looking at it sure. saying, practically speaking. Oh, yeah. It's easier because you know you're playing number one. Right. Get that part. right. Look at that. Gurley set sail right up the gut. First down inside the Ole Miss 30. That's a tired Rebels defense. But what action from that offensive line just blowing away the Rebels here. Yeah, this is a great job by Dallas Lee, the left guard. And Canarius Gates, the left tackle, and of course the tight end Arthur Lynch. All of them did a great job caving down that that right defensive side oh. of the Ole Miss. Look at them moving people four or five yards up the field, giving Gurley that nice hole to get through. A big game for Georgia. 31 yards for Gurley. He's up to 117 on the day, and uh, Marshall checks in for him. The two are roommates, of course, and where uh, they decided to become a package deal. Uh, coming out of North Carolina, Gurley from Tarboro and Marshall, who's carrying the ball from Raleigh, North Carolina. He's knocked down inside the 25. Chief Brown making the stop, and I think he lost his headgear, and he'll have to come out of the game. Now, this was a, a very physical run by Marshall right here. Oh. Credit for the tackle, but little else when that one happens. 
Would you want to be in Chief Brown's helmet on that kind of play? Low in the shoulder, catching Marshall right in your mouth. Second down and three. Murray looking for the fade. He's got it. Touchdown. Rentavious Wooten. Just take it to the post corner and let it go. This was a double move on the outside, and it was just a... This is the best throw of the day, in my opinion, from Aaron Murray. He's throwing a lot of good ones today, but right there, he put that ball up before the receiver came out of the break. It was a double move on the outside, and it was perfectly thrown by Wo uh, by Murray and a great catch by Wu. That's that old saying, and Drew Brees talks about it often. You got to throw your receivers open. That's confidence. Yeah. He knew exactly what Wooten was doing. He was patient, put the ball up, trusted it. Wooten ran a great route on the outside, and that's how you score. He may be a graduate student. He's also a graduate quarterback today, that's for sure. And Tavius Wooten on the receiving end of the touchdown toss. Seven plays, 77 yards. And you said this was his best throw of the day. And I'm going to show you why. Watch right here. Here's Wooten at the top of the screen. He's going to run a double move. When he gets to the top of the route, watch what Aaron Murray is doing. He's anticipating. See the hesitation? And Murray's already ready to throw the football. And that ball is up as he's coming out of the break. And people, I'm telling you, that is hard to do from a judgment standpoint to make a confident throw when a guy stops and then starts back up again. You've got to have 100% confidence in exactly where that guy is going to be. He trusted Wooten. It was a perfect throw. More props to yeah. Aaron Murray for a great ball game today. And I tell you what, people forget about this with Aaron Murray. And, and by the way, five touchdown drives, all 75 yards, all less than four minutes. The thing about that championship game last year, all the drops he had early in that title game against LSU, he right. had a ton of them. Right, before the game got out of hand, that, 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 that keeps him in the ball game. Yep, and um, he, he's the goods. He's capable of lighting you up. And you can tell he's all smiles right now. He needed a game like this with what's ahead. Right, right. And you're, you're very fortunate when you're a quarterback to have a bad game like he had last week, an, an admittedly terrible game, yeah. to come back and win that ball game and get it, get it put behind you and move forward, very fortunate. Jamie Lindley boots it, and Jalen Walden brings it out to about the 20-yard line. Ole Miss has the ball at the 20-yard line, and Barry Brunetti will come back into the game at quarterback for the Rebels. And I think he's probably the only quarterback we're going to see the rest of the way, I think. Ben Wallace probably did get bumped up as he was coming. Yeah. You could tell something was wrong as he was coming off the field last time. And he needs a healthy Bo Wallace the rest of the, the way. And in this offense, you know your quarterback's going to take a few hits. Well, Jones just said welcome to the game to Jalen Walden. Yeah. Freshman from Memphis, Tennessee. This this draws with Jarvis Jones is something else. I mean, the Walsh, Walter Camp National Player of the Week last week, SEC Player of the Week. He is big time leader in the SEC tackles for loss. Another great example right there. Second and 15 for Brunetti. Greeted in a hurry by George's Brand Brandon Smith, who has really been lights out with hits today. He's caused a few fumbles with some of them. I'll tell you, those corners have been wrapping up. I think it's become a real lost art, and one of the reasons why we've seen so many teams light up others with 600 plus yards. Secondaries need to wrap up and make sure tackles. Right. You, you, you don't see it that often. Right. It, it's, uh, it's it's kind of become a lost art, but you really stand out when you when you become a good open field tackler. Third and 14, and Barry Brunetti in some trouble decides to step up and air mails that one over a wide open Vince Sanders incomplete. Don't forget later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Now that's a throw that Bernetti's got to make. He was under a little bit of pressure, a little duress, but had a wide receiver wide open for the first down. 
on the sideline. No one between him and the throw ball just sailed out of bounds on him. I go back to that conversation Marty Snyder had to open the half with Hugh Freeze about we'll, we'll find out a lot about our team and, and how they react to gut check and there's still some uh, maturation in front of this club particularly from a defensive standpoint. That was the answer he got against an elite program. The Georgia Bulldogs here in the second half. Nice return by Mitchell up to the 50, a 48 yard boot and a 14 yard return. Georgia in command. Get this one, one more, and you're headed to Hot Atlanta. Score here in Athens between the hedges. The Georgia Bulldogs leading the Ole Miss Rebels 37 to 10. And a reminder immediately following our game back to Studio 43 for the Jeep post game show. Adam Zucker in the big chair, flanked by Tony Barnhart and Spencer Tillman. All of that immediately after our game. They'll get you up to date on everything that's going on and the many BCS ramifications as a result. All of that coming up. Ken Malcolm is in uh, as the eye back now for Georgia as they set up shop at midfield. Malcolm takes it off the right side. You know, early in this game, is a, look, the, there was a nice cutback there. Nice cutback as Elston made contact. And a quick reminder, as we touched on earlier, the Poll results, a reminder, this is, look at this. We ask you as a CBS poll question, who will be tonight's winner in the matchup? Alabama, the runaway freight train choice at facebook.com slash SEC on CBS. Are you a little oh. surprised by that? Well, I, I agree with the 79%. The I uh -huh. do pick Alabama myself, but I'm surprised it's that one-sided. Yeah, especially with so many other teams and fans that have so much at stake if, if Alabama loses. Exactly. I mean, you would think. Granted, we have, um, I'm sure, a very strong SEC footprint audience. Richard Samuel IV has uh, come into the game, and he carries it again ahead for a couple of yards. Now, that could be turn out the lights on a national championship opportunity, but they're still very much uh, in the BCS conversation, but still some time left in that game, Steve. There is time I'm trying left. to give you a little help. <laughs> Well, I, I personally <laughs> felt that this was one year early for Notre Dame. I'm very excited about where they've gotten oh, yeah. under Brian Kelly so quickly. I did not see the hiccup coming today. I thought they would have one or two losses by the end of the season, though. So, uh, Prior to the very snap, proud of how far they've come. That was offense, unfortunate. Number 71, five-yard penalty. It remains John down. Theus, the outstanding right tackle, was guilty of the premature movement. Very few procedure penalties. We've had a couple of personal fouls, but uh, a well-played game for the most part. Only the third Georgia penalty of the day. Mark Ricks, their team has had great discipline. Today they've been very disciplined. That They're one of the most penalized team in the SEC so far this year. Ole Miss one of the best. In fact, Ole Miss third in the SEC as far as fewest penalties. At, uh, the, the, the Georgia Bulldogs, number 11, way down at the bottom. Almost twice as many penalties on the season. Ken Malcolm remains in the game at the I-back. On third down. And he'll take it again off the right side. The Rebels stuff it. That's uh, Keith Lewis, number 24. Sophomore from Tampa making the tackle of Malcolm. And the Rebels get a little frustrated yeah. out there. They had high hopes coming into this ball game and really believed they could play with the Georgia Bulldogs, but just too many mistakes today. Yeah, those turnovers. If you're Georgia, you can get away with them. You're at home. Ole Misses really were difficult to get over. Remember, they, they led this game 10 to nothing. They had held Georgia to 48 total yards in the first quarter, and it's 470 plus since. It, it truly is a, a matter, quite simply, of the big plays. Yeah. That, that got this game out of hand in Georgia's favor. Time out. We'll return to Athens in just a moment. Is there any doubt? <laughs> Look at the numbers. 21 of 28, 384, four touchdowns, and the big one, 
None of these coming off the three interception performance last week. Great job by Aaron Murray. He answered the critics, stepped up and played big for his team just like he had to. Four touchdowns to four different receivers. The SEC's leading active player in total offensive yards just come pounding that 8,000 plus number he had coming in. That punt is away and uh, will nestle inside the five yard line and more of the same. Oh, the ball was knocked into the end zone. So a little good fortune coming Ole Miss's way late as they'll be able to set up shop now at the 25. Well, I think Theus got a little bit excited there. <laughs> he had time. That ball was not bouncing. It was rolling. He he could have gone up and been a little bit more ginger in the way he tapped that yep. football. Gingerly approached the football. Yep. Instead, he knocked it into the end zone. Bring it out. The ball on the 20-yard line. After the punt. And Brary Brunetti coming into the game. Playing out the string for the Rebels. Wallace did get a little nicked up, and I think at that point, uh, discretion, the better part of valor for Hugh Freeze to let him sit the rest of the way with what's left for Ole Miss. Plenty still for them to play for. That's Octavius Mathers, number five. Taking it towards the boundary and out of bounds beyond the 25. May have gotten six, Bakari Rambo making the tackle for Georgia. I think a lot of fans, particularly within the SEC, and I mean this sincerely when I say it, when you looked at the poll response, 79-21, we're responding to the concern that if Alabama doesn't run the table, they'll be shut out of the national championship picture. But the SEC wouldn't get a chance to go after a seventh consecutive as Mathers has stopped. But remember, a win here for Georgia and a victory against hapless Auburn next week they could win the SEC East and be awaiting the winner of uh, tonight's game between Alabama and LSU in all likelihood. And a return to the SEC championship game. Brunetti looking for neat in traffic, almost picked off. Fortunate, really, that it wasn't. Yeah, Brunetti has, has played quite extensively in this game, has not thrown the ball particularly well. He's thrown two or three that could have easily been pick, picked off. Josh Harvey Clemens was there to break it up. Number 25 for Georgia. Broadway will punt it away. And McGowan is back deep. Air really taken out of the Rebels towards the uh, three seconds left in the first half. And Georgia having the ball, and this is one of the reasons I guess you defer when you win the toss, you get a late touchdown and the football to open the second half. McGowan with the fair catch at the 25-yard line. Now let's take a look at the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. And speaking of which, here it is. Well, this is it. This is the one that really, I think, broke the back of the Ole Miss Rebels. Right at the end of the first half, play started with 12 seconds. Aaron Murray scrambling around and... Elston, the fresh, the, the freshman safety for Ole Miss did not keep his discipline, let King get behind him down the sideline, and a great throw by Aaron Murray. Bad result for Ole Miss, but exactly what Georgia needed going in at the half. Richard Samuel IV has come back into the game. He'll be the eye back. And uh, Parker Welsh, number two, is in the game at quarterback now. They're hoping to uh, allow Hudson Mason an opportunity to red shirt and that's the reason why Parker's in the game at quarterback and Samuel takes it ahead for about five Parker Welch young man from Jessup Georgia 63 200 pounder red shirt sophomore just happy to get on the field get a few snaps at the end of the ball game and this is pretty much exactly what the doctor ordered if you mark Rick. You think? I think so. <laughs> the only injury I think of significance that we've seen that may affect him is Marlon Brown with his leg injury. We'll see how that turns out. You know, you think of losing Bennett, that their best wide receiver at the start of the year. Plus you had the four suspensions. This Georgia team is just beginning to gain traction from some uh, early season issues they had either off the field or with injury. And uh, look out, this team is only getting better. They did have the scheduling advantage, not having to play, and it'll be talked about, not having to play Alabama or LSU. But uh, hey, 
You just, there's no one, one you can blame for that. You have to line up and beat the people in front of you. And you could argue this year that the SEC East is uh, not nearly as inferior to the West as it was a season ago. Well, the other thing I think is really important from Georgia's standpoint, Mark Rick told us he didn't feel like his team had come together and played oh. their best game all three phases so far. They played very well on occasion offensively, very well on defense. Special teams has been there, but today I think this is the most complete game they've had. If you Samuel the fourth, out ahead to the 37. We would like to uh, say happy birthday to our audio man, Jay Willis. Happy 50th birthday, Jay. Welcome to the club. And congratulations to the Georgia Bulldogs, Mark Ritt. Just one game away from yet another SEC Eastern Division title. As he looks for Hugh Freeze, he has great respect for Hugh. Thinks the world of uh, the job that Freeze has done in his initial year at Ole Miss. And still just one victory away, the Rebels, from bowl eligibility. And if you had said at the beginning of the year, there's uh, Todd Grantham talking to Hugh. You would said at the beginning of the year to Ole Miss, hey, we'll... We'll give you a chance to win six. Would you take it? I think most of their fans and certainly the coaching staff would have said, yeah, I think we would. Let's go down now to Marty Snyder, who's standing by with Aaron Murray, the star of our game. Marty? Terrific game from the young man. I've got to ask you that throw at the end of the first half. How did that change your confidence? Uh, just get some momentum heading into halftime. Um, the first half was definitely a struggle. We knew it was going to be a, a battle the entire game. They're a very talented team, very talented defense with a lot of speed. Uh, but it was a great feeling, like I said, to get in the halftime, up 14 to 10, uh, then to come and score the first two possessions of the second half and really uh, take the game over from there. Was it the best game of the season for you, and also was this the most complete game for the team? Um, you know, it's definitely up there for, uh, for myself, but as a team, I definitely think we played uh, great, you know, kicking game. Uh, defense was lights out once again, and in offense, we definitely made some huge plays tonight. Um, so it was a great team victory. Tim, Georgia now one game away from the SEC title game. That they are, Marty. 37 unanswered points after trailing 10-0, 384 yards for Aaron Murray. For Steve Berline and Marty Snyder, this is Tim Brando saying so long for, from Athens, Georgia, where once again our final score, 37-10 to 10, Georgia. Don't forget in primetime, 8 p.m. Eastern, it's the showdown. In the SEC, number one, Alabama, with number five, LSU. The Jeep Post Game Show is coming up. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the SEC Championship. We'll send you to Adam Zucker right after this.